Hello, everybody, and welcome to Rise of Dracus Chapter 2, episode, I want to say, like, 8? Yeah, episode 8. How are you all doing today? Very good, Neil. How are you? I am good as well. Would you like to briefly show off your, your tea mug? I feel like this is something that the world needs to see. Sure. <clears throat> now, we've all had tea before most of us and um, there's always a problem with the tea bag and this mug that I recently found at the store has a little a little nook in it a little slot in the back of it to hold the the tea string uh, which will prevent the bag from the string from like falling to your side as you sip it prevents you from having to tie it around the handle uh, and so that's it's nice. so smart and I hope that someone watching is like a, a mug manufacturer, like a ceramic mug maker, and that they start a line of this because this needs to be normalized. I need to be able to go into any store and have the normal mugs and the tea mugs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, this is new. We've only had it for a couple of weeks, so we'll see. Maybe there's some, like, fatal flaw that needs to be discovered. You know, maybe the... Um, capillary action will will bring the moisture up and then down the side too much maybe the the string really does need that extra quarter or eighth of an inch of space i don't know we'll, well see i we'll think see. there might be an intelligence barrier to use because for perhaps the less the less uh smart people they might think to take a sip from the side that there's the divot and then spill Ooh. the tea on themselves mm -hmm. so only recommended for ages 12 plus I will say, though, that because the divot is on one side, you must hold it only in a few ways. If you try to hold it with your non dom with my left hand, then mm. the, the bag is facing me. Um, so there there's a slight. You know, you there's might a learning like a, curve, even. Yeah. Or you might have like a left handed yeah. or right handed version of the mug, which does make it less versatile. But that's what happens when you have specialty equipment. It loses versatility. Mm. Bravo, Excellent. Mug. Uh, so, what happened last time? There was a boat. There were orcs on the boat. The party threw a party for the orcs and poisoned them all and then murdered them all. But then the boat was still there and a conversation was had and the one remaining person on the boat, they got ganked. And then there was nothing but the enslaved rowers from a far off distant land. I think it was the Dardens, some collection of islands somewhere out over in the ocean that we don't really care about. And so now the party is back in our, our little town of Santa Barbara um, with a boat, with rowers, and the enemy, in theory, isolated. It should just be this, um, you know, <clears throat> probably like a first level wizard or something like that. This Geraldine Silverworth. What a ridiculous name. She's certainly not capable at all. Um, and she's got, you know, only like 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 orcs at her display. It's probably, you know, it's probably a lot less than that. People always overestimate the, the number of enemy they have to face. Um, so... Yeah, they're on one side of the mountains. They might be coming to this side of the mountains, or maybe not. And um, we're in the position of trying to figure out what it is we're going to do. So, Party, what is it that we're going to do? Well, okay, Elaine. Well. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, first of all, um, we'll explain to the uh, people from the Ardennes that for now it would be best if they settle in the outpost. Um, and that we are trying to overthrow those people that uh, enslaved them and are currently here. Right? I'm sure they will understand. Yeah, that's pretty easy to understand. They, they're they on board. They're happy to be free. Right, because um, we might need their... their uh, if they want to go back home, you know, somebody needs to row their, their ship back to their place eventually. Yeah. They're not navigators. They don't actually know how to get home, but they can work the oars if someone can just pilot the ship. Mm -hmm. Were they able to understand uh, the orcs when the orcs were talking to each other? Uh, I don't think any of these people speak orcish, maybe? Uh, nope. None of these people spoke oh. Orcish, but they do right. speak a dialect of Eridonian, so you can communicate with them very easily. And I think 
Um, Trump can communicate with them very easily. And Pichachu, I don't remember if you speak Eridonian or not. I'm looking at your character sheet if I can mm. find it. Crumpet, that's your name. No, you do not speak Eridonian. So you can't speak with the rowers directly, but, you know, the party can communicate and we could just pretend that translations are happening. Yeah, I think it would, the idea was just that if they would be able to understand would have been able to understand Orkish, mm -hmm. then maybe they could have, you know, gathered some information mm. from the uh, slavers. But since that was not the case, is it possible mm -hmm. for us to search the boat and see what the orcs brought? Like if they had any letters or something, I feel like if you were sitting on an island for several months until the next boat arrives, there might be some letters or something you might be carrying with you. Or yeah. Some commands mm -hmm. or some general letters. Um, there are some communications on here. I feature you search the boat. You can find in the uh, captain's quarters. There's some logs about what's been going on with the ship. Um, and there's some other paperwork. Uh, let me just take a quick look at my notes that I made about these things. Let's see. I would probably hand off the paperwork to Vincent since he's the uh, bureaucracy person. And he probably mm -hmm. has an easier time going through those really quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, Vincent, you can take a look at these things. You can see that there is a rough map marked out as a professional cartographer. Uh, you can judge the quality of this map. And you can tell that it is... It's like the map that a foreigner would make of your hometown after only having been there for a little while. Like, it's got the vague outline of what this place sort of looks like, but the dimensions are, are really not to scale. Um, it's definitely the work of someone who's not had a lot of experience in the region and has just given you the, the quick and dirty version. Um, as for the paperwork itself, most of it is in um, the common tongue, or in a, 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 le a legible, readable tongue for you. Um, a lot of it is in this like Eridonian dialect that they speak in the Dardens, and it's super straightforward. You are, you know, this is the the list of supplies we have. These are the things we're supposed to drop off. We're supposed to make room for X amount of cargo. Um, in addition, if there's a, additional room left over, these are the higher priority things that we would want, and it's all pretty basic, you know, trade goods, um, anything that's new or valuable or exotic, any sort of new knowledge, any artifacts that you might have discovered, any precious resources, preferably non-perishables. We'll like do a faster, smaller ship if we're trying to transport like fruits or plants or something like that. Um, and from all the, the work that you've gathered, this is not the like... This is the, the minor resupply. This is the, here's just some extra arrows and some extra javelins, and here's some extra workers. And then we're gonna take anything that you found and we're gonna compile the list of things that we need. And then we'll have like a proper major resupply at a later point and a proper major maybe reinforcement and a proper major um, uh, pulling out materials from this area and sending it back home. Like if you needed to transport um, you know, 20 tons of exotic lumber, this is not the ship to do that. But the next one would be. I don't know who signed that stuff. I mean, someone who's not here, whose name you're never going to need to know ever, but because oh, you asked, okay. no, you asked. And so, so you it was receive. signed by, um, <clears throat> Admiral Sada. What is it, a muesli bar? Okay, Admiral no, it's, Sada. Um, an expansion port for my PC for extra Sada slots. <laughs> okay, very nice. I'm sorry, this is my fault. Admiral Sada. Mm-hmm. That's great. I'll okay. ask the uh, people after they've had a moment to calm down uh, about the going-ons of the Dardens, have they been completely taken over? No, not completely. The Dardens is a collection of islands. It's in like three different rings. There's like three, uh, five islands in this middle section. And there's like 12 islands around that. And then there's like 60 islands around that. And one of these outer rim 60 islands has been taken over by this Ferrasi Empire. But the rest of the 60 outside ones haven't been. And none of the 12 middle ones and none of the five inner ones have. 
but um, the whole area has been in chaos. There's been some pirates that have been running around, overthrowing islands and killing people en masse. There's a dragon that's been freed from a prison underneath the mountain for the last, where it's been for hundreds of years and is now just terrorizing the area. Um, the central islands are controlled by this like mythical figure known as the White Prince. He's a human, but he's like hundreds of years old because he's like a like a 16th or an 18th level cleric of Aster, the god of order, the god of lawfulness, the god of like bringing society together in something that's usable. Um, and the White Prince has been keeping the peace in the area for a long, long time until these pirates showed up and this dragon showed up and the Verasi folks have been able to exploit the temporary weakness in the area to take over one of these smaller, far off, outer ring islands and turn it into a base of operations. And then they have kept um, pretty localized. They're not trying to grab other spots. They're just using this as like a, um, a way station, a, a supply base, uh, an intermediate repair shop. And that is where this boat came from, too, like that yep. particular island. Yep. Right, so it doesn't sound like that if if they were to launch some sort of um, military campaign, then that island doesn't seem big enough to actually, you know, send off many, many ships. Like, it sounds like it's just a stop in between, so they'd still be coming from Solom if anything was going on. Yeah, like, you come from Solemn, you stop off there to rest, resupply, fix any problems on the boat, get everyone ready for your final journey on the way here. Um, How long does way, it usually take like from, from Solemn to, to the stop to here? How long does it usually take them? From Solemn to uh, where you are right now, or from Solemn to this middle island? Well, I assume they usually stop. They do. In between there in the middle yeah. island, so, so like it's from like Solom to the middle island. A month and a month and a, or a month and a half, depending on weather and all sorts of factors, a month and change. Uh, and then from there to here is maybe another three, four, five weeks, depending on weather. <clears throat> okay. Well, I think I'll order the um, soldiers I was staying behind in the ambush to um, unload the cargo as well and stash it in the warehouse for later transport back to the fortress. Done. Yep. You got plenty of hands. Many hands make for light work. The rowers are also happy to help. They are happy to be free. Um, but over those mountains, there's this wizard. And uh, she's got some orcs with her. And I don't think they're very happy with you right now. In fact, um. I'm pretty certain they think that this is their outpost and this is their ship and you can see a ship from pretty far off especially if you can stand on top of a mountain so if they have any scouts or any lookouts they're gonna know that the ship is here they probably would have seen the ship coming as soon it was as it was visible which could have been at first dawn on this day or it even could have been yesterday at some point depending on you know weather and views I think based on the observations we've made earlier and that Nook Nook the um, goblin made, though, it looks like um, they are severely wounded, like uh, from that storm still, and that they lost a whole bunch of people. Like, it didn't mm. sound like there were still 50, 60 orcs there, but it seems like they lost a great amount of people. You think um, the storm killed a bunch of them? I it is a little strange because we went through the fortress straight, like, through the storm, right? Or, or pretty much at the same time as the storm was on. And they seemed pretty relaxed from what mm -hmm. I can remember. They didn't seem in a panic, you know? They mm -hmm. weren't barricading themselves or something like that. They were standing around the fireplace. But uh, they were also not many. Like, we didn't meet that many orcs there. And we just figured they might be out with Geraldine on her mission at that time. But apparently, since Nukluk was there as well and he said you know they lost a whole bunch of orcs it's hard to tell at the moment but hmm. i am currently assuming there are not that many left because she also said you know you have to leave or we are going to murder you all which seemed like a pretty empty threat at that moment or at least a very desperate thing to do like mm -hmm. we will threaten you um because you might still think we are uh, still strong and that mm -hmm. is our last resort because we are currently in deep trouble 
Mm -hmm. So I think if currently I'm assuming that they are in a lot of trouble and were just trying to uh, intimidate us. And the, since that ship was also not reinforcements, as that letter claimed, but just resupply, right? Mm -hmm. Makes it makes it seem very likely like they were just trying to scare us off. Um, mm. And gives me the impression that they're probably not coming after that boat with resupplies because they are probably too weak to claim it. Otherwise, they would have tried to protect it straight away when it came to mm. land and would have already been in town, right? Mm. If that's what they wanted. Because losing a boat is... I mean, maybe maybe the army of Varasi is rich, but losing a boat is a big deal. You really don't want to lose a boat to your enemy. So I just assume they're too weak to, to defend it. That's a safe assumption. So, um... That's yeah, some good I'll investigative look, work. <laughs> I'll look at the others and I'll say, um, we'll have to... go and face Geraldine. The only question is... Can we really march all of my people through the jungle of death? Um, and also, uh, what about the orcs? Like, if she has, like, 50 or 60, if she does have them? Oh, then we do need my people. Yeah, I think to myself, fam, that would make for an excellent card player. <laughs> How many people do we have on, like, our side? Ooh, we have... That could be, like, used to come. I want to say, like, 26. Numbers. Is this really the happy halfling music time? I'm just, you know. <laughs> yes, it is. Having a nice beer, kicking back, and uh, doing the planning like that. I don't know it works. That's fair. Okay. Okay. Here we go. I no, get suspicious. I love the music that. is too happy. <laughs> How's this? Slightly better? Creepy. Yeah, slightly better. That's okay. Okay. I think with all the time off I've had from everyone being sick in all of my campaigns that I would have cleaned my desk and made my notes easily accessible. I would have been surprised. <laughs> I think you had 16 soldiers. I'm looking for my true notes. Yeah, I think you're right. I had two. I didn't take all three groups. I had two groups, and then we have Wardron, and um, I believe Willa is on top of those uh, 16. I think she's at 17. That sounds right. I think I remember there being two arms or whatever those were. Yeah, two spears. One of them a bow, one of them of um, spears. Seems all right. That's good enough. Well, the way I see it is we can't make a side journey because they could just uh, march directly for town. So I think what we'd have to do, I do want to get all the Nerids on board uh, because it seems like they might actually be able to help. Uh, but we should march through the mountain pass area directly between the two of our places. Uh, do we want to go through the underground and try to climb our way through the through the well and hope they didn't, you know, find our entry last time? Mm. Um, Ambush them from from their own midst. Well, we have to think of how we treated the well last time. We climbed it with a rope, and then. We didn't like cut off the bucket or anything, did we? I don't think so. We just we took the rope to rope. climb out of the fortress. Yeah. So they could, and then there was a rope dangling off of the side of their yeah, right. building. So I think that they might, have, from that, have like, and it's not that long ago. I'd assume they'd be more skeptical, like, oh shit. 
you yeah. know? It's also a, it's a pretty awkward place to invade from. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, so is from the outside, though. They have vision for a very long range, and they can see in the dark. Like, they might just shoot us down with bows from the fortress. If we're not careful. Because be... it's a fortress, they're in a very defensible position. Just walking up there is not going to be possible. If they keep the, go the gate closed, we're all going to be dead by the time we can try to get in. We could do one of those good old siege them out things. Starve them out. Mm. Mm. Um, we could create like a distraction at one end that draws all of their attention and then have like an invisible someone or like a sneaky someone go and unlock the front gate. This is a little bit more risky of a strategy because if like the main group is like hiding behind some trees waiting for like the signal that the invisible person has like unlocked the gate, those people pass their stealth check or don't pass their stealth checks and they're fucked. Um, Hmm. Might be easier for the invisible person to open the gate and then do a signal instead of people creating a distraction because the invisible person is already invisible, right? Yeah. And then people approaching once the gate is open. I do not enjoy splitting people, though. My old instructor always said, never split the party. Those were some wise words back then. It's a good thing Crumb is so capable. Yes, I'm quite sneaky, Elaine. I can do it, I promise. I know, I, I think you could actually climb up that well, you know. I could, especially if um, I had invisibility cast on me and then my nimble half-footedness. Uh, the problem would be... I, I saw the gate last time. Was that big bar? Is that like a strength check to move it? Um, it, if you, it's just a matter of your, your raw strength. There's no check needed if you have time, as long as your strength is above a certain mark. If you're in a hurry, as long as your strength is above a certain mark, it's, it becomes a strength check. Um, mm. <clears throat> yeah. What's your strength score? Um, good question. You're gonna need like a. You're gonna need a nine to do it at all, um, if you've got Ten. time. Yeah. Then in theory, you could lift it. It would be above your head, but you could lift it and on your tippy toes and with a little bit of work, you could get it undone. It might take you, you know, three rounds between your relatively low strength and your your height to manage that. Mm -hmm. But if you climb in and you take a rope with you, you can also fasten a rope. Like, you can climb up by yourself with your roguishness. Fasten the rope. You let down a rope and somebody can easily climb back up in the well unless they filled it in or something. We just need um, you to get through and then you could have help. Yeah. Um, technically. That's true. How many I'm people can you turn invisible with one spell, Vincent? Oh, let me check. It is one. One per cast. All right. One I could, people. I could cast it up to three times. It is. In it would be interesting if three people, like or like two people, me and someone else, climbed up. Hello. Thank you. Um, climbed up, and like I was the one that like, but then I also had backup. Like I wouldn't want to start hitting people. I'd just run into a corner, like until everyone else barged in. Mm -hmm. But if we did get caught and there was like a big strong buff guy there, just in case we did get into a situation, he could start swinging, you know, keep us safe. Did this uh, resupply have food on it? Like, are they trying to resupply food? Uh, there are some dry rations here but not the amount of dry rations that would supply the size of this force for you know many months on end it looks based on the the amount of food being brought that it is expected 
they will be producing their food locally or harvesting their food locally. That's yeah, a great I question. Mean, food. That's everyone needs to eat. That's important. Yeah, I don't I don't think they would have that many stores of food there. Might be uh, a... I'm pretty sure Nook Nook should know because if you use a goblin for anything, you use them to store and move things, right? Mm-hmm. So I think we will inquire um, with Nook Nook. Yes. Nook Nook will tell you that the orcs definitely have uh, large crates of uh, dry rations and some fresh food remaining some food that stores well remaining. But Nook Nook will also tell you that food scarcity is a concern and everyone has been on two thirds rations for a little mm -hmm. while on the other side. Nook Nook will tell you that there's some food that's easily findable in the jungle and they've been sending out people to harvest what they can from the jungle, hunt what they can from the jungle. Um, but it's not always great because sometimes someone goes out to hunt and they don't come back and that makes mm. the, the big wizard lady very mad. She gets very angry when the hunters don't come back. Um, and then she yells at everyone. Mean wizard lady. Nook, Nook, do you mean. know anything about uh, water ladies? Water lady? Yeah, have they been talked about by any of the orcs? Uh, ladies that rise from the water over there. Is this trick? Is this trick question? No trick. Yes or no question? Mm, yes. Did I do right? Oh, do, you, <laughs> do you know what they've been doing to the water ladies? Yes. Oh, uh, what have they been doing? Yes. Oh. He has no idea, Vincent. <laughs> yeah. It's okay, Nick. Got my hopes okay. up. What do you have in mind with the Nerids, Vincent? Uh, we tell them that this is their time to gather up all 500 of them, make a stand. Because uh, these people are invaders and I've actually killed one of them. I'm not even sure they can make a stand. It sounded to me like they have very fixed areas in which they move. I think that in case of emergency, they might do something like this. I don't know that they would to leave their creeks and rivers behind. Especially, like, I could imagine the ones that are really close by, like the connecting ones might. Yeah. But they I can't imagine old. that, like, they would all abandon their post because like literally what if something happened while they weren't there yes that's fair enough but something happened here so i think we can get the neighboring nerds on board I do think you really possible. want to do you want to go to uh skeely and tell her that her sister died in that dam is that what you want to do well i was thinking something like that but she's a little bit further away but yeah, but she's also to... the most reasonable one. If we want to get through to the others, then we'd have to go through her. Skeely was quite reasonable. I'm worried, even though one of their sisters died, that, like, they seemed so naive, you know? I, it's worth a shot, but they are going to be so hard to, like, communicate. Yeah, I action. agree, Vincent. I don't think we will have great success if we can't convince her we won't be able to convince the other so if you would if you want to try i'm willing to visit her and ask her about it but we are not going through all the other narrates again trying to find a reasonable one this time if she agrees if you manage to get her to do something then you know you do have my respect but i think if we're trying one that's the one we're trying the problem is she's about a week away um I don't know if your opinion on Nerid's reasonableness is entirely shared across all of them. Sure, they might be naive, but... That... And so going for one week to see Skeely is approximately the same amount of time it's going to take us to walk through all the forest and find a single reasonable one, I promise you, because it took us a very long time last time as well. I mean, my concern is that they decide to march through the pass against our outpost while we're well, gone. Well, then maybe the Nerids are not the option we can choose. 
maybe the option is to talk to a reasonable uh, just talk to one i think if i remember right coming out of the mountain pass there was one right there so we could just talk to her oh you be my guest <laughs> great but we need a def a, a plan that definitely does not involve any narrates so <laughs> if the narrate agrees then what then we'll have she more just people. walks with us and comes through the well or what is the idea here there would strike me as really powerful powerful uh i don't really know what they do but they seem like magicians wizards right do you so have control of water can. generally like can they like summon rain or something We could ask them what they could do, I guess. I was thinking, like, maybe we could get them to flood the area, flood them out of their castle. Uh, but the castle was kind of safe during the bad rainstorm. Oh, the water will run underneath it. Yeah. I was thinking if we flood them out and we knew that the flood was coming, we could be on trees and then just arrow them down. Um, but I don't... I think A... The amount of water that they control wouldn't be enough to flood the whole thing. And B, probably, isn't the best terrain to flood. Mm. Right, so I think we ambush them through the well with invisibility. The question is who comes with on the ambush, because not everybody of us is going to be invisible. I am not sure I trust Willa to I mean, if anybody of my people would be able to to lead that part of my army through the gate, it would probably be Willa. She knows a lot about stealth and quietly ambushing, in my experience. Um, so I could come with, but then we would be four people down in the well again, and the entire leadership inside of that castle. This well plan seems tough. There's no way up there. How are we going to get a rope connected? Well, if anybody can climb it, I assume it's a uh, crown. Well, there's no rope now. Yep. I'm talking about scaling the sheer wall of that well. The well opened up into like a tunnel underneath, right? So it's not like there's a, a, a sheer wall that goes all the way down. There was like a, you know, like a 10 foot or 15 foot. However, whatever the height of that passage was, was just open air. I, mean, you, I guess you could maybe try and climb on the side of the wall and then up on the ceiling and then up, but you'd need like a spider climb spell to do that. Well, I don't think you have one of those, do you, Vincent? I do not. Mm. Well, time is on our side. If we simply camp outside of their fort, they'll have to come out eventually. Do you think you have well, what, greater my... numbers than they do? No, I don't think we have greater numbers. But you have We took out a fort of 30 soldiers. orcs with uh, the soldiers barely doing anything. So That's what, true. 20 more? No problem. That's a good point. All you need is enlarge and Elaine and her plate mail. Chain mail. Hey, it's chain mail. Your AC is still 18. It doesn't need to be 20. Mm -hmm. It's fine. The problem is that they have the option to flee through other means. Like, there's no way we can surround the entire castle with 17 people. It's not happening. Ah, then perhaps mm. gathering all of the Nerids and assaulting them that way is the way after all. Mm. How would the Nerids assault them, though? That's my With concern. Their mighty magics. I'm not going to make a plan based on fantasy. It's not happening. But like, did we uh, ever see the Nerids really like step out of the water? I I think that they like to remain. We want the water. And can I just remind everybody that we spent days trying to convince them 
to fight for us and pre to protect their land. We have gone through this entire process and we decided afterwards that they are very naive, they have no experience with fighting whatsoever, and that they don't see the orcs as a big enough threat to actually be concerned about them. We did go through this entire process, I... and I promise you it took long enough, and we came to the to the conclusion that it did not work out, otherwise we would have done it the first time. Okay, so we need an alternate plan, and if by chance Nera joins us, wonderful, but this is not a plan. Yeah. I didn't come up with that same conclusion. So first of all, the fact that... Yeah, Vincent, you, think... you also want to just sleep in the goddamn castle? The fact that... That was a terrible idea, so I'm sorry if I don't work. trust every plan you make right now that includes magical beings. Very sorry about that, okay? Oh, man. that First of all, that would have worked. Second of all, uh, if... The orcs yeah, are the really great the because Geraldine attention. told us we are their deadly en uh, enemy, and if we don't get off the island, she's going to murder every single one of us, if I remember correctly. Right, but they could. Yeah, you do remember that, that letter? Yeah, I think still you have, still have it. We have that diplomatic immunity, don't you forget? Uh, but what anyway. Diplomatic immunity are you talking about? Have you lost your mind? No, listen, it's not happening. I'm telling you right now, we have to figure out how we get into that fortress. And my question is, if we don't can't go through the found through that well, if we can't go through the front gate. It's an old crumbling ruin. Okay, it's ancient. That thing is falling apart. Is there maybe an angle where, where, that we haven't seen yet, where this fortress is not perfectly protected? It was the well, but I feel like we gave we gave it up a little bit. Um, we didn't walk around the entire fortress. We just went up and went then through the front gate. Mm -hmm. Right? We didn't see the entire other half of it. That's right. It was dark and stormy, and you didn't get a good look at anything. You saw the doorway that led inside, um, but you never actually saw the inside. You you saw that it was many floors, but it was kind of hard to get a judgment of what was all on them. If you talk to Nook Nook, he'll tell you the back of the castle um, abuts a, a sheer cliff wall. Like the castle was essentially built into a cliff. Like someone must have carved out a flat section of cliff and then built a castle into it. So behind mm -hmm. it is just... Pfft, what a, okay, well, if behind the, them is nothing, what about sewage or catacombs or something like that? How, like, are there stairs leading down? Uh, you have Nook Nook to ask these questions to, and he will tell you, no, no, there, no storage, no basement, no cellar. And you've never seen any crumbling walls or anything like that in that old, old castle? Walls, all, yeah, crumble wall. Of course, mortar fall, rock loose. Loose enough to make a hole in the wall from the outside? How loose are we talking? Oh, the walls, walls are, are three nook nook thick. Three nook nook thick, that's a good measurement. Like it depends. Is he talking about how thick he is, or like in length, like you know how we lay him down? And then, or is his his length. <laughs> yes, yes. These walls are about ten feet thick. <laughs> All right, that's very thick. Mm. Well, Nook Nook was there after we climbed out, and he talked about the ghosts and the uh, well. Nook Nook, has anybody ever mentioned um, a rope going missing from that well? Or somebody intruding into the castle? Have you heard of it? Um, I think Nook Nook returned before you all did those things. Uh, Nick Nick Nook Nook was with you before you went and before the storm, so he does not know about any ropes going missing in the well. Did he? Yeah. He came he... in. No, he came back when when we were resting in the castle, right? Uh, back in town, and we met him. He came on the day when we were supposed to head back out. He came towards us and told us a story, which is the reason why we're still in town, right? Ooh, I thought it felt like we, we, we wanted to head out, and you were like, "Oh, Nook Nook turns up." The day you were supposed to meet these people, I'm not sure. Maybe I'm making. Okay, am I up, am I getting this mixed up, Trump? You have you have an idea? Yeah, I remember you mentioned to us that he told us about the uh, 
ghosts in the, you know, around the castle. In the well. Oh, fell. okay. You're right. Thank you. Uh, so yes, Nook Nook will tell you that um, the well is broken. It's broken. The well is broken. Yep. In broken. what way? Yeah, they, they fill it in probably. Um, rope is, bucket is broken. Bucket is gone. Rope is gone. And the well is very deep. Too deep to go. Hmm. We took, <clears throat> we took, um, uh, Aina and, and we, we put Aina on rope and we, we put Aina down well and then the rope move and then we pull rope up and, and Aina no more on rope and rope is broken and frayed. Who is Aina? Goblin. Goblin friend. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Okay. We need to keep the soldiers stationed here, at least until we figure out how to proceed with this nightmare mm. of planning. Well... Our party is discussing these things. Where are we when we're having these chats? Are we in the middle of town? Are we in the tavern? Are we in the fortress? Are we over at the the fancy estate? What's the setting for this uh, debate on how to go forward? Well, if this is happening straight after the ambush, I feel like we would still be in town because you want to make sure they weren't waiting for the ship, right? Okay. To do something and then missed it. So we're probably in that tavern. Uh, cleaning out um, crumbs, tiny poison barrel. Oh no, you had it under your under your arm. That's right, you brought it with you. But you know, uh, cleaning out the tavern so the poor innkeep doesn't have to deal with the corpses in there. Mm. That's very kind of us. Can I get everybody in the party to roll me a flat d twenty with no modifiers? And uh, would someone also roll for Vorden, please? Vord Vordren. Do we want high or low? Don't worry. Just don't worry what the roll is. Just make some dice rolls. And uh, I'm going to need you to tie off that one there, Vincent, if you don't mind. What was that? Uh, Yeah, There's two threes. Could you? I rolled one for me and one for Wardron. Yes, but I I need them to not be ties. (laughs) Okay. Wardron will reroll. Excellent. Oh, okay. mm. and I don't know if it's that good. could be very good or very bad. Oh, very bad. <laughs> Vincent's re-roll. Oh, Vincent also should re-roll. Yeah, okay. yeah. We, we we cannot have them tie. Wow. <laughs> uh, one more the time chances. with the two of you, please. Just, okay. just yeah, just pick like two out of those you know just fucking whatever the most charitable roles please just pick the best one wow. oh my god okay. that's why we're doing this all right how much time do you guys have seven oh, that's crazy the, the oh, okay thank oh. the, the gods it but, happened but a fourth time does it, does it count now since okay all right oh, so. we have a three before or this is just tie. Those are just tiebreakers for the threes. So it's fine. Uh, it's fine. Uh, it's great. Uh, Vincent is the one who rolls the three. Vordrin ended up with a seven. Pichachu with a ten. Elaine with an eleven. Wow. Those are all low rolls. Excellent. Um, I'm gonna deal with those on the side. It's not a roll roll. Don't worry about it. Uh, you continue with it's your planning in normal. the tavern, and maybe since it's in a tavern, and. We've been planning for a little while. We'll we'll change the tone. Dun, dun, dun. Back, oh, to, back the to the happy music, yeah. everybody. Dun, 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 dun. Oh God. Yep. The rest of the town begins to flow, begins to work. People go about their business. Folks are coming through, looking at the orc bodies that have been dragged off into the garden. Um, people are visiting with the the new rowers. What time of day is it? Oh, it's probably mid-afternoon by now. All right.
Okay, if nothing's happening, I guess we're done. We're done. Landing in here for now, so. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna so head back the... outside. Okay. You head outside. And I will talk to Willa if yep. she's around. Uh, yeah, you can go find her. She's probably back at the fort or something, but that's only a mile or two down the road. You can go no, catch she's up not... with Willa. Is she at the fort? Aren't they here? I brought Maybe. my soldiers with me, right? It's a close enough distance that it doesn't matter. You can meet them anywhere you want. We're not in any sort right. of time pressure. You find well, Willa I'll... somewhere. Okay, and um, I'll tell her that we have to head out. Like, I'll bring her up to speed and tell her we'll have to head out and ambush the keep in some capacity. Why? Ma'am? Because right now, um, these people are weakened because they didn't get their resupply on the ship. And they are planning to wipe us out before we wipe them out. And they do have a wizard with them who seems pretty capable. And the last thing I want to happen is to have the outpost Santa Barbara be burned to a crisp by a giant fireball that I didn't see coming. But why would we assault a well-defended fortress? Well, that is my problem. I don't know how to get these people out. The alternative would be to maybe go and ambush the hunters who come out of the fortress. Uh, I don't think we can starve them out with just, you know, 18 people. I'll follow whatever orders you give. Uh, what's your opinion on it? You don't seem particularly happy with it. I don't like the idea of assaulting a castle in an area we don't understand when we have less than two dozen people. That seems risky. Yeah. What about if we scout first? She shrugs. Probably is we can wait for reinforcements, but who knows when their reinforcements are coming, you know? It might just be a bigger battle afterwards. When is our ship due? Mm. Uh, ooh, you know? It should be coming up. You're not exactly sure, right? Because of weather and effects and everything, but it should be coming in the next few weeks somewhere. I think we should still scout out the area, and I think we should ambush people that we find in the meantime. At least thin out their ranks, even if we don't go for a straight ambush on the castle or the fortress itself. Sure. That's only a win for us. It sounded like from Nook Nook's information, the only way out of that keep is the front gate anyways. So yeah, be... the other side is a cl sheer cliff. They fell in the well. I think so. Yeah, then it shouldn't be too hard for even a small group of us of 20 to get anyone who comes out. Well, we can't take everybody if we're just ambushing people who come out. We want to, like, thin out their numbers every time they send someone out to hunt. Mm-hmm. I think so. I think eventually, after the first couple, they'll probably send them out in, like, a bit of a larger group. So we'll have to have enough people that can take on... I, I imagine the first couple will be easy. Not unsuspecting, go out single or in a duo. But after a couple of those don't return, it'll be like a group of five. Maybe even Geraldine will end up coming with them because it gets dire. Okay, sounds good. We can perhaps have the army camp at the pass. That's the key point. I don't want to live the town entirely undefended. I think we should take three spearmen and three archers. Us, I think that should be enough. The town won't be undefended. We're guarding the key pass that's in between us and them. Oh, I guess you're right. <sighs> All right, then let's do it that way. Excellent. Can I get everybody in the party to roll me another d20 
This time ties don't matter. Yay, go Vordren. That is four. Excellent. Okay, uh, sorry. Don't worry about it. I'll pick it up when it becomes relevant. Um, what were you saying, Fair? That's for Rose, is what I said. Hmm. Mm. Okay, sorry. But with, with regards to the plan, you, you talk with Willa. We're going seems... to the mountain pass, and we're trying to ambush people who come out of the uh, fortress for hunting. Excellent. Okay. Um, does the town have replacement armor for our lost armor? I you can't can... remember if we got that. What was that? You got armor yes. already. We have replaced your Oh, yes. we have that already. Okay. Yes. Excellent. And I guess the soldiers, the two soldiers whose armor we took maybe might fit into the orcs. Oh, stuff that's right. Not. Um, so as you, you head back in to the tavern to, to gather the party around again, um, you notice that Crumb is having a nice chat with the, some of the onlookers who are wanting to hear about the battle and Crumb is relaying the, the battle of killing these orcs. Um, Vordren and um, Vordren and Vincent are off sort of on a table by themselves. Uh, both of them are sort of like head in hands looking down at a table. <clears throat> and as you're doing this, Vordren kind of reaches over and shakes Vincent and Vincent's head just like flops forward and hits the table with like a loud thump, like the sort of thump that no one would voluntarily ever smash their head into a table with the sort of force, like an uncontrolled fall from sitting to table height, crack. And Vordren shakes him again and he sort of just like limply falls to the side. Hey, Vincent is limply, like he's passed the fuck out. Is that what you're telling me? Something like that, yes. He has fallen and hit his head while sitting at a table in a tavern. I I run up to him and I grab his head and I'm like, Vince, Vincent, Vincent, did you drink any of the mead? Are you stupid? <laughs> you can... Roll him over a little bit. He's cool and clammy to the touch. His eyes are unfocused and sort of um, looking off into a great and terrible distance. Oh no! Oh, what the! F I'll just, I'll just look at him and say, "This, if this is some weird magic he didn't tell us about, I'm going to be really angry." <laughs> I'll have a look around the tavern. Do I see anything? Is the door suddenly open? Like, did anybody come through here? You just came in. And I'll close the door. I'll close both doors. There are two doors in here. And I'll, like, stand in front of one. And I'll have my sword out. I say, guard the uh, door. I don't know if there's anybody else. I'll tell Vordren oh, to get up and people, guard the other door. There's a bunch of ordinary people around looking about. Does anyone look suspicious in this tavern? Looking around, anyone making too much contact, averting too much contact? Looking sweaty? Looking sussy? Origin goes to lock the door. Um, they are, everyone's beginning to look suspicious all of a sudden as swords are drawn, doors are told to be shut. Um, the atmosphere in the tavern goes from jovial and fun and we've just captured a ship to, oh my God, someone in here is a murderer. Oh my God, these mainlanders might think it's me. Oh my god, I'm in mortal danger all of a sudden. The place gets real quiet. I'm going to go to Elaine, uh, and I'm going to put my hand, hand on, I'd say her shoulder, but more like on her wrist, and be like, do you think that Geraldine could have cursed him from wherever she is? Slap him again. Try slapping him again. He needs to wake I'm up. We need to get him out of this. walk over to him. I'm gonna like grab his hair and like pull back his head and just wake up. You 
abuse the helpless wizard, um, and the eyes will flitter about a little bit. He has some level of consciousness. Um, Jeff, your stats are reduced to one third of their normal action uh, uh, levels. You are unable to move, attack, or cast spells. Wow. Jesus Christ. How do we... Is, what, I'm sorry, I missed that. Is he able to speak? Yeah. But, you know, he sounds like, like he's ter- like, he sounds like he's got a really bad illness. That sort of lethargy, mm. incapacitated state. Vincent! Vincent, buddy! Mm. Hello? Crom. <laughs> Did you drink some of the mead? Yeah. You drink the meat. Yours. Oh, okay. What's wrong, buddy? Did he drink something? Does he still have a cup? He does have a cup. Okay, I'll take his. I'll take his. I guess I'll, I'll move away from the from the door, and I'll pick up his cup and I'll give it a whiff. Does it smell normal? It smells like bad ale. There's no Vincent, obvious what are sign. You feeling? Of... Well, I've had my like keg pretty much under my control the whole time, so I don't think that like literally it would have gotten mixed up. And I I check myself to make sure I still have my poison vial on me. I assume that it's quite heavily used at this point. Yep. Yep, all of your stuff is in the spot that it's supposed to be. The poisoned barrel, I assume, I've been assuming that you took care of it and made sure that it wasn't left behind the bar. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I brought it out with me to try and like uh, haggle with the ship people before. A weekly point at the mug and say, stop, drink. Well, oh, that should either mean noise. stop and drink, or that means don't drink. Yeah, <laughs> don't yeah. drink. <laughs> what? We save, won't, Vincent. Save everyone else, too. Oh, I, I will stand up, and I will hold the cu- my cup, and then I'll throw it on the ground, and I'll say, everybody in here, stop drinking! We don't know why he's passed out. Be careful. The bar is silent. No one's hands are anywhere near their cups, except for a couple of people who are, you know, act, just like knocking their beverages over to spill them on Can tables. Can I run over to Vincent? Okay, so I come from a big noble family. We're, we we know, we know big parties, okay? And even though you usually don't talk about it, at these noble festivities, people drink a lot. Can I try to make Vincent throw up very un, uh, un, in an unnoble way? Can I try and make him, yeah, the good old, you know. Yep. Yeah. Yep. The good old bathroom special. Yeah, I think that's possible. You can get him to puke up whatever he's got, but whatever is in his system is clearly already taking effect. So right. it's not going to reverse what's happening, but it might prevent it from getting worse. Okay, well, that's what we're doing for now. It's this weird poison or something. So I want to go over to the barkeep immediately. Yeah, Who's say- behind that fucking bar? Behind the bar is a, uh, a portly man who looks like he's had one too many sausages from the uh, butcher across the way. Sausage Prem. man, here! Bram has checked <laughs> the barrels before because she was in charge of the mm-hmm. of the bar, right? Uh-huh. So she should maybe be able to notice if anything is different. Like, if was anything moved or is there a keg that wasn't there before or something like that? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, a lot of things have been moved. Looks like they've been in active use. People have been hanging out in the tavern. One barrel has got finished and got replaced with another. Other barrels ended up being slightly repositioned. Just as you're moving around, oh, I got to reach this. I'm just going to slide this barrel. It's mostly empty over this way. Or this barrel's tapped out. We're going to roll it out back and bring out another one. So there have been some adjustments made. Um, you can look around. Yeah, I want to hop on onto the bar so that I have height on Sausage Man. Like, I want to stand on the bar, you know? Yeah. Bar stool onto the bar. I'm standing. Now I'm looking down at him, and I'm going to have my dagger out and be like, you, hey. 
Hey, 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 hey! I've been Which living here for years! Barrel? Which barrel did you pour his drink out of? Um, he points to a, a new, fresh, mostly full barrel. That and barrel there. It's the same barrel right. that I poured drinks for the rest of you from. I'm going to go there, and I'm going to pour him a glass, and I'm going to stick it to his chest. Drink up! Like hell! Drink up! No! Why? Because you think he might be poisoned! And you think the barrel might be poisoned, and I don't want to die! Oh. I suppose that's... But... I... Is he the only person? Everyone's been drinking out of it. Oh, I just tapped it recently. So that means how many drinks have been poured from there? Maybe a dozen? Does anybody else look like they're sick? There are some people who look a little pale in the face or maybe a little queasy, but no one is like fallen over on their table completely incapacitated. Elaine, and I'll motion her over. Yeah. Elaine, I would, I would pat him down, but I don't think I could reach his full body. Would you mind doing that for me? And I will say, my superior will be patting you down. Don't move. Elaine, please go ahead. And I imagine Elaine starts fucking frisking him for a while. I'll, just, I'll, I'll, I'll tell him, you know, I'll say, okay, just stand there for a moment. Yeah, you can frisk Murky. Murky has uh, some keys in his pocket, some coins in his pocket, um, a small, uh, like, beaded bracelet that his daughter made for him, but it's, like, not good and it's embarrassing and you wouldn't want to wear it in public, but, like, you don't want to tell your little daughter that you don't want to wear the little bracelet she made you, so you just, you put it on your wrist, and then when you get to the work, you just put it in your pocket. He has to be guilty. If Neil makes you feel for a character, you know, we have to, we should murder him right now. <laughs> He's a little kid that makes an embarrassing bracelet. Fuck that guy. He's dead. No. Does okay. anyone else have access to behind here? Well, was anyone here two seconds ago as you poured that ale? Was anyone here five minutes before them? You were? Yeah, obviously. Before then. Before I came here. Well, yeah, I don't know. I mean, no, I, I, this is my tavern. I got some wait staff, but I run the bar. You were here. Who, who waited on our table? He will throw a finger in the direction of your waiter. Um, a man named... Uh, oh, boy. Nope, that's a terrible name. Mm, nope, that's a terrible name. I'm so bad at coming up with names. You need to name him after a drink. Well, I, the first guy was Sada, so I was thinking Margarita. PCI, but you can't <laughs> name someone PCI or PCIE or NTFS. Just call him Bud after Budweiser. <laughs> uh, I like your disgusted face, but inside you were like, that's not too bad of an it's, idea. It's you not know? too bad. Yeah, it's actually not it's too kind bad. It's kind of your style. Kind of your style. Uh, Blair. Blair did it. Actually, it's a. Yeah, Blair could be a man's name. That's fine with me. Yes. Really? Okay, it can I guess. in this world. We're apparently. not judging. That's fine. Okay, Blair. Blair. Blair, a word. Hey, hey, I didn't do shit. Why would hey, I hurt son, the man? I'll grab him and I'll He's a nice slam guy. on the table. Leo? Yes. Okay, Ow. I'll take the nice guy. I'll slam on the table. Listen, listen. Okay. Someone has poisoned this man, and you should be a lot more worried. It's probably the fucking goblin! No, I don't think so. I crouch on the bar stool as she's like kind of going at him, and I'm like, yeah, you should be worried. <laughs> <laughs> well, can we, I... we're patting him down. Does he have any, what's on him? A list uh, of, a uh... list of things. Blair on his person has um, keys to probably his house, um, pocket change or whatever he's been picking up off the bar for payment here or there. Um, do, 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 do. 
that's probably it um yeah i think his pockets are mostly empty it's just house keys and coins any range how much of his drink did yeah. vincent drink two thirds three quarters something like that okay i am gone. taking the mug yeah I... i'm yeah. i'm going to take one sip okay how do i and, and then i'll wait and see if i feel weird about it yeah give me a um a wisdom check and a constitution check and a perception check give me all three of them That's... It's all right. <laughs> well, uh, in that the order, check. wisdom, uh, constitution, Borgen. perception. Excellent, thank you. Borgen? Borgen from the door uh, keeps an eye out amongst the crowd and just sees if anyone looks particularly nervous or suspicious. Um, well, give me a wisdom willpower check for reading people's faces, Vordren. Can oh. I stand on the bar and do that too? Yeah, also give me a wisdom wheel power check, scouting for nervous faces. Yes. Wisdom wheel power. Oh, I see. Yeah. It's two different things. Yeah, yeah, or same, is same. It, is They're the that? same thing. That's the check you need to make. If this stat is normally called yeah. wisdom, I like to call it willpower. I think it fits a little bit better, but I, I use both because not everyone's familiar with my terminology. So, Vordren. He can see these folks. The the three most nervous and uncomfortable people are clearly Blair, who is like being, his face is pushed into the table. Um, Nook Nook is always nervous and anxious looking, so he looks scared as shit right now. And Murky, the barkeep, is the third most nervous and uncomfortable person. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Vordren's gonna walk up to Elaine and say, it's gonna take her away from earshot of everyone else uh, and then mutter in her ear, hey, I think one of two people did this. Uh, side of the barkeep or this crumb what I've been Vincent's bodyguard for a while so I have a good eye for people one of those two what do you mean one of those two poisoned Vincent why would crumb poison Vincent been on opposite sides, right? Of making decisions a lot. Well, I've been on opposite sides of making decisions and I didn't murder him, I promise you that. Oh, yeah, that's why I eliminated you from the list of suspects. <laughs> but What? Uh, but that halfling, she's a rogue. Yes, she is! And she's the one with the poisons. Maybe this is her chance is to true. take out Vincent and make sure that you know, she always gets her way. And her way is to support the Vorasi Empire over a disagreement with Vincent. That seems very, um, a, <laughs> a very big emotion. Look, I'm just saying it's person. one of those two. Maybe it's the barkeep, but, but don't turn your, don't turn, don't, don't overlook that shorty. Howdy. All right, I'm, I'm going to go back to watching the door. How do I feel? Um, you had a sip of his drink. And you feel fine. I feel fine. Did it taste weird? Or was it just bad ale? Compared to her ale, I guess you would say. Yeah, um, you don't really notice a flavor distant difference. I don't know how well and refined your palate is, but this is not the best ale in the world. It's not like there's a, a gentle and delicate flavor that's being 
subverted. It's already sort of like a, a pungent beverage to begin with. It's really a great beverage for hiding poisons in, which is why it works so well for you all. Okay, I'm going to pick up you could also Vincent. just have a fever, right? What if it's just like jungle fever that he's got, that he's picked up? Sure, just mosquito. I'm going to pick him up and, uh, I guess, hoist him on my back. And I'm going to turn around to the rest of the tavern. And I'm going to say, listen, people. We've made the decision to defend you from those orcs that live on the other side of the mountains. Okay. We decided to free you so you could live a normal, a happier life. And whoever did this didn't betray us. They betrayed you. That's not a good sign. I'm not going to arrest or press any further today because this is not an issue that I have to solve. This is an issue you need to figure out. And I think I'll pick him up, and I'll tell Vordran that uh, I'm going to leave for the estate. Vordran uh, thinks a bit about... He's been around and knows that Vincent's been talking about this. Uh, there was this list of suspicious people that was conducted a while ago. Are any of those suspicious mm. people in town, or in this tavern right now? Ooh, well, let's find that list of sketch. Ah, the traitor's list. First on yeah. the list was Lord Campbell. You look and look around. Lord Campbell's not here. Next is Tina the blacksmith and her apprentice. Now, the blacksmith shop is literally across the street. And as you look around, yeah, Tina and her apprentice are both here. Uh, Amy is her name. Uh, Nick the swamper? No. No, no, not here. Adam, the harbor master, and Retta, his assistant. No, they're actually still taking care of things down by the docks. Rash, the doctor, is not here. But Retta, the landlord, is as well. She's the last person on the list. Wait, how do we have Retta, the assistant of the harbor master, and Retta, the landlord? Do they both have the same name? Yeah, you, two people can have the same name. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, I still, I want to look for, like, rings and such on both the barkeep and the waiter. Um, because rings, I don't know, I feel like you, you would do this. Where there's nothing suspicious on them, but a ring, I have a ring that is antique vintage, and it has a little gem that pops up, which is, I think... It was created back in the day for either like poisoning people's tea or apparently doing cocaine. Like you a get a little bump ring, in your ring. Yes. Yeah. Anyways, I have that. I neither you poison people ring? That's very good. nor do cocaine in real life, but I have this ring. And I, good that cover. would be so smart to have a little like, yeah. Do yeah. any of them have like a weird ring? Well, the bartender has three rings, but they're all flat. They're all like, you know just straight up bands with no gemstones uh, on it. Mm. Um, the waiter does have sort of like a, a rough cut black, it looks like a piece of obsidian um, on a ring of his. I'd like to fiddle with it. Give me he a ring. Want, he doesn't want to give you his ring. It's the most valuable fun. thing he owns. And you're a halfling thief, a little stealer. Oh. He's not going to get this back yeah. if he gives it to you. Elaine, mm. hold him. <laughs> it does, look, does it look like a suspicious ring? Is it just a ring with a black uh, obsidian on it? Only like way a... to tell us to to investigate it. It looks just uh, so like hang a piece. Me, hand me, hand me your ring. I'll hand it back to you. Yeah, you're more trustworthy than the the rogue. He'll hand you the ring. Um, you can fiddle with it. Give me a, give me an intelligence check. 31. Seems like a pretty normal ring. You can't find any way to open this. 
you say with Vordrin on your back, uh, Vincent on your back, as you're fiddling. Okay, okay. I'll hand the ring back to him and I'll shake my head. I have a knowledge of poisons. Yeah. This has to help me in some way in this. It has yes. to. Yes, yes, give me, uh, let me take a look at your character sheet because there is a check that I want you to make me crump it skills um i want you to make me a a will no an intelligence check as well please ma'am excellent now this indeed looks this is a a debilitation that he's suffering right here this is mm -hmm. mechanically debilitating do you still have that poison document list that i sent you if not, I'll, I'll just relink it to you right now. Yeah, if you could relink. Um, on that list, some poisons give a condition of debilitated. So it could be any of those. Um, the other thing that could cause this is actual, regular, ordinary sickness. Like he could have the, you know, the f equivalent of the flu or the equivalent of, you know, fast onset COVID or something. It's possible. Disease is, is still a thing. And Vincent's a... You know, maybe he's not the sort of person to let you know he, that he was feeling ill until he passed out on his table. Oh, no, man. it seemed like it came on so fast. Um, is there a list of like the actual poison poisons? Is that on the, oh, the tabs at the list? bottom? You can just flick through. Oh, got it. Yeah. So I think you can see that the neurotoxins give debilitating. Yeah. Actually, it's just the neurotoxins. So it's one of those, except for th thistle leaf, which you could never. Yeah, so it's. It would have to be belladonna, mushroom, death cab, that kind of ingestion kind of plant. Onset is 30 minutes, roughly. Mm -hmm. Would it be different from the one that we used on the orcs, or would it be the same? Which one did you use on the orcs? Did you put them to oh. sleep, or did you debilitate them? I put them to, put sleep. Them to sleep. Yeah, yeah so that I would have been a narcotic. One. That was a milkweed that you were giving them. Different poison. So seeing this, I would think of belladonna berries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now I'm like, hmm. Berries or death caps, like mushrooms. So I'm gonna mm -hmm. look for like berries or mushrooms. Damn. In the tavern? No, on these people. Um. Oh, you have a little snack of fucking berries. Yeah. Where are they? I'm gonna You're look just for gonna it on the waiter. Everyone in the tavern? No, 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 no. On the waiter mm -hmm. and on the barkeep, mm -hmm. and then I'm gonna search behind the barkeep to see if there's any like sussy. I imagine the easiest thing would be to do. I guess it could be death cap, but like mm -hmm. berries in the drink. Anything like yeah. herbal that's fucking sussy. Okay, well, give me a perception check just for your, your first initial look around. Yeah, you don't see anything. Oh my God. That's a terrible roll. But also behind the bar is a pretty complicated area. Like there's lots of places. And if it has an onset time of 30 minutes, then that would have given someone plenty of time to like not just drop it behind the bar, but... Maybe there's a secret spot. Maybe one of these barrels has a false bottom or something. Like maybe half an hour. It's a long time. Uh, are we still having Vincent on Elaine's back? I'm still trying to leave. You can leave. The halfling in charge of the tavern. I'm not sure I want to leave one halfling. How many people are in here? Like 25. Prom, can you handle this without getting yourself in trouble? I'll pull up my other dagger. Oh. Um, that's what I'm talking about. We're not doing that. I'll help put my dagger back. Fordren will ask oh, you, yeah. you want me to come with you, Elaine, or you want me to help the halfling? I'll look at Vincent. Is he, he's still he's still pale. Right? I'm worried that this is going to get worse while we're standing here. Vincent, you have Vincent any... just... Lies you guys there. figure you guys figure it out, Wardron. You're his bodyguard. Okay. I'll bring him back to the estate. Is was the col is the color of his ale any different than ours? 
Hmm, that's a great idea. You can like pour out a little bit of his and it'll pour out a little bit of someone else's and see if there's a color difference between them. I'm going to need you to give me a different perception check to see if you can notice it's a natural one. Wow. The same fucking beverage. 100%. And by 100%, I mean like it's a dark, murky beer to begin with and the lighting in here is not great and... You know, half an hour onset time. Maybe this was even a different drink that was poured. You know, maybe it was the last drink that he had, but the effects didn't kick in until he was partway through this one. That's true. Or you, who was paying attention to how fast he was drinking? You don't know. Like maybe he goes through drinks really quickly, or maybe he just takes the one and sips it slowly. How much do you know about his drinking habits? You haven't spent much time in like party settings or social settings. You've been out in the woods trying to survive. Also, we don't have watches. So, you know, judging 30 minutes is tough. Anyway, as we're sitting in this tension, we're going to go to our first break and we're going to come back on the other side and we're going to find out what happened or at least take a good stab at it. Catch you then. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Rise of Dracus chapter two. So. Poisoned Boogaloo. Vincent's poisoned, we think. Elaine's going to leave with him. But are you leaving everyone else in here? Are you taking anyone else with you? Um, I think I'm leaving everyone behind here. You're leaving... And I'm going to make my way to the estate. That means... Wardren and um, Crumb should be here. Right. And we're not taking the bartender or Nook no. Nook or this no. vicious blacksmith okay. or no, the no, landowner. Nook Nook is coming with me. I'm taking Nook Nook okay. with me. Okay, but the other suspicious people uh, that were on the list of traitors... Uh, Red of the Landlord and Tina and Amy? Nope. Okay. All right. <clears throat> well, you're going to head back to Lord Campbell's estate. Uh, you'll probably need some help hauling Vincent a mile. I, in theory, you Is physically can... Is there a horse can, or a donkey I can... You can commandeer a cart and someone to help pull I it. I shall commandeer. Excellent. That's the, the power of... Um, lordliness and uh, authority is that you can just commandeer anyone's gear anytime you want. Um, that's just the yep. way it goes. Great. So you head off and we'll get to you in just a moment. But while you are left behind, we've got we've got Crumb in charge with Vordrin as backup gazing yes. over this list of suspects of potential traitors. Hmm. Despite, are you allowed to like re look at something? Yeah. I just feel like in Crumb's mind, she's so certain that it had to be someone who was in contact with his drink. She's mm -hmm. still on the drink train. Mm -hmm. She's the only people, correct me if I'm wrong, that could have touched his drink. Barkeep, hands off to waiter, waiter, hands off to Vincent. Well, unless someone put something in the drink while the waiter was moving from one side to the other, or unless someone put something in a drink while he had it and it was sitting in front of him and someone nearby put something in. Um, but those are the only ways that it would, unless the bartender like poured the drink and then left it on the table and turned his back and then the waiter came and picked it up. But then that would be kind of a random poisoning, right? You wouldn't necessarily know exactly who the bar drink, bartender is pouring drinks for. This is a great question. Is this someone trying to poison anybody? Or is, was this Vincent in particular getting poisoned? I think it was in particular, which is why I'm... Mm. I think it was targeted. Mm. And so I'm investigating like a targeted right. poison. Well, then, it's, then it would go bartender to waiter. And from the waiter, maybe somebody could tell that that drink was good. Like maybe the bartender said this one's for Vincent, just so the, the 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 waiter knows where to take it. So once the waiter has it, it's them to Vincent, and then anybody who might have been able to intercept it during that time frame, mm -hmm. either on the way to Vincent or while it's sitting in front of him. Otherwise, it's it's the bartender or the waiter. Um, am I able to recheck, reinvestigate behind the bar? 
yeah, it'll just take a lot longer. You can make another roll, Got it. Um, but it'll be, you know, properly searching the bar and pulling things out and looking underneath yeah. things and tapping around. It'll take you like at least an hour to, to properly search the behind the bar area in which- Got it. Before I do that then, I'll go and ask Vordran to help me, like back me up, searching the people that were like on the suspicious list. Mm, the three of them. Retta, Tina, and Amy, the collaborators. I really don't think it's them. I, I really don't think it's them. You can just give them a quick pat down, right? A real quick pat. Yeah. Well, the blacksmith carries a hammer on her. It's a sign of her position. She likes to remind everyone that she's the blacksmith in town. So she carries a, a small smithing hammer on her. Um, she and her apprentice also have like some tools that you might use for your smithing. Like they've got like a, a utility belt that they would use for the actual work, but sometimes you stuff something in your pocket. So someone's got like a little key or a little um, scraper that you might use to like mark a spot on a piece of metal. They've got tools of their blacksmithing trade as well as some coins on them. A um, little bit of jewelry, no berries, some clothes. No mushrooms, no tinctures. No berries, no mushrooms, no tinctures. Uh, they do have a little bit of bread and cheese on their table that they must have brought from somewhere because the bar doesn't serve food. No, But they live just across the street, yeah. Yeah. It's fine. Other right. lady, landlording lady. Red other landlord. She's the wealthiest person in this tavern, uh, aside from Elaine. And mm. she has, like, a nice little spread before her. And she has her own drinks that are brought from home that she pays an uncorking fee to uh, be served here. Um, and she will not let you search her because you are so far below her. You do not search the landlord. The landlord searches your home whenever she wants. I'm sorry. You clearly you don't know who this woman is. It Got it. What's in front of her on the plate? Ah, oh, she has a three quarters eaten pulled pork sandwich from Shark mm. Sharkies. Is that the name of the place? No. Uh, the the sand shark, mm. the other tavern in town who actually does serve food. I'm but gonna hop seen... up on her table and like sit on the table part, and then I'm gonna go and reach for her sandwich, take it, take a bite, and say, "Listen, lady, you don't know how this works. Someone here poisoned our friend, and we're gonna figure out who that is. If you don't comply, this is gonna look real ugly for you." So why don't Finn, no, Fordrin, hold her for a sec. We are gonna search your belongings. I'm gonna go over to her and I'm gonna pat I her down. I can make life extremely difficult for you if you treat me like a common criminal. I have no reason to poison this man, nor would I deign to do such a vulgar task by myself. If you go through with this indiscretion and put your filthy paws on me, I will see to it that your time in Santa Barbara is the most unpleasant time of your life, and you will be begging to leave this pleasant little coastal town when I'm done with you. The thing is, the law isn't above anyone, lady. You want to live in a place that's safe, don't you? Mm. If I was above the law and above investigation, mm. then the whole place would be fucked. So who's if searching you? If you were above you? the law... Uh, hey, if we can search you, I'll let my buddy here search me. No problem. She looks to Vordren. Vordren nods. I, I wanted to search her. Thanks for bringing that up. Now, now, hand, now, now hold still God. while she searches you. Uh, well, you're going to find poison on, on the halfling. No, no, no. We're searching her. Oh, 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 the, the, the woman first. <laughs> right. Yes. Uh, she will allow herself to be searched, but she looks 
very unhappy. And you can see the wheels of vengeance turning in her head. You know that she's going to come after you for this later. And who knows? I mean, she's only a landlord, and you're not paying rent anywhere, so... But the reason why is because she kind of, like, consented to it. I didn't want to fuck with her in a way that she'd be like, oh, well, your time on the aisle is going to be so bad. That's why I was like, listen, nobody's above the law. You know, I personally, I don't disagree with you. I think your course of action is very reasonable, but this is a, a rich landlady. She's still upset. Yeah, she's still upset. Okay, well, that sucks. Yep. But you lost the second you asked her, don't worry about it. Like the second you asked her, she was done with you. you yeah. Whether you searched or not didn't even matter anymore, you know. Yeah, That's well, true. I'll see to it that Wardwin will search me as well. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm gonna go back to the bar and now I'm gonna conduct my hour long search of the bar materials. Well, Vor- Vordrin. Oh. I don't want him to search me right in front of her. Well, hold on. So, Vordrin, uh, we, you can search the lady. She's yeah. got plenty of jewelry on her. She's got rings, she's got necklaces, she's got earrings, she's got fancy clothes with hidden pockets. She carries um, a bag of money on her, as well as um, a pocket full of trinkets of various makes and kinds, like a little silver stool, which you don't, why the, would someone carry like a little silver stool on them? Uh, she's got a, a small dagger hidden in like the, the backside of her skirt, like the, I don't know how you would describe it. Like the skirt folds over itself many times when it goes around her waist and hidden in those folds is a small dagger. Um, but no, yep. no poisons, nothing that looks poisonous. And What's then- the, Can I ask you what the stool does? None of your business. I thought she loves Monopoly or she's a wizard. Or is this uh, landlady kind of oldish, older side? Like late forties. Hmm. Fordren's gonna, you know, not have been too rough and not search too hard during this entire time. Uh, he's kind of just doing this because Crumb wants to. Uh, but as soon as he gets an opportunity, he says, All right, I think that's enough. Now, we're searching you, right, Crumb? Yes, no, that's totally fine. I want to be searched not like right in front of the lady. Not like literally right there. I can still be in the bar. I think. That's the least we can do for her. We can no. search you right in front of her. Why would why would you do that? Uh, you know that I have poison on me from uh-huh. the last time. She admits it. No, no, no. I'm not saying this out loud right now. I'm saying this in character oh, okay. or out of character. Oh, okay. But I don't think that would make sense because Warden was in on the whole plan of me poisoning someone else. Mm. So he knows I have poison on me. Mm. Unless he's the traitor and he is trying to get you into trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I just wouldn't understand why, why, because nobody else in the tavern would know the plan, mm. know the plan that we went through. And it would so look if, bad if everyone saw that really you had poison. Bad. Yeah. Yeah, because we're looking yeah. for poison, so if we found poison on exactly. you. Exactly. Yeah. It, it's it might like mean if we were you... looking for, like, a murder weapon being, like, a dagger, but, like, I knew that he had a dagger on him before. It's like, I'm not going to, like, out you in Doesn't front of there. Doesn't that but, oh, yeah. make you look a little bit guilty, though? Like, oh, of, I mean, I have poison on me and I just poisoned someone like not that long ago. Yeah, which is why I was afraid that he had drank the barrel. Right. Stupidly. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Well, Vordrin, the, the halfling gives you that look of, can we do this in private somewhere, not in front of everyone? Yeah, all right, Vordrin nods. Cool. All right. Well, Vordrin, you do find poison. On the yeah. Line. Oh, if I, if we're like in a place where you, nobody else is seeing, I'll be like, "That's what I used in the barrel." Don't think he got the drink yet. Uh, and then did otherwise, you, did you bring all your poisons here and then pick the right one for the situation, or do you actually have like a full stock of poisons on you? Like, uh, I think. I think, I think you so. grabbed your stuff, your things of poisons, came yeah. to the bar, sorted through it all, and we're like, "This is the right one." So she does yeah. have a whole slew of poisons on her. Yeah, and I'll 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 poke through them and I'll be like, this one is the one that I put in the thing. This is the blah, 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 blah. but they've been on me the whole time, and I don't have any. I don't think that are debilitating. I'd have to check my 
notes with you. I don't think I have any debilitating ones. Well, he's got to so take your word on that, right? Yeah, There's I'll no try way to... and explain to him the differences, but of course, he's just going to probably hear like, Mmm, Vordren. Yep. Right, Vordren says, mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I... Uh, of course I knew you had poison. I guess this doesn't really help or show anything. It doesn't help or hurt you. Yeah, well, the other ones are, like, stabby, so I have a yeah, lot of yeah, stabby yeah. See, ones. I, I, this is beyond me. Hmm. You know, well, as long as we're think, talking about this crumb, yes. you know who would have the easiest access to one of Vincent's drinks? Vordrin, who's sitting right next to him all the time. Yeah, but I don't think it would be him. Um, I'm going to... You don't think like, that the hired bodyguard might have flexible morals uh, and might be in a situation to benefit from something like this? All right, buddy, it's your turn. <laughs> Me? I've been Vincent's bodyguard for years. I know. I don't think it's you, but hey. <laughs> you know, you, you feel me up, I feel you up. Now spread your legs. Gordon rolls his eyes and lets the halfling do this. Yeah. No, no. No, there's no poisons on him. Just weapons and implements of destruction and death. Um... <clears throat> I'm going to quickly, I'm going to say, wherever, whatever little place we're in, I'm going to stay here, Vordren. I'm going to go out and I'm going to find Dobby the Elf. Nook Nook. And I'm gonna... Nook Nook left with, me. with a ah, lane. Ah, got it, got it, got it. Sorry. Okay, then I'm going to start my very in-depth search of the bar. Excellent. I want you to roll me a perception check at advantage as you search the bar, looking for the clues, secrets. Does that mean I roll twice? Yes, roll twice, take the higher oh. result. 25... And a 30. 30 is an excellent roll. Well, you will find the secret panel where money is stored. Uh, just underneath the bar, there's like a little push down and then it will pop up and you can just like slide the money in there and not worry about it. And that's separate from the lock box where some money is put as well. This way, you know, not all eggs in one basket. Can I just say that Vorton's instruction will be don't let the barman leave. Don't let the waiter leave. Just during the hour that I'm investigating the search. All the other people can go though? Like, the other people, if they want to come and go, uh, uh, sucks, but I can't they all keep leave. them all in there. They immediately oh. all, as soon as they're left allowed to go, they, they flee. Yeah. Oh, but the bartender sure. and the, the waiter will stay. I mean, sure. you can search the rest of this. There's that secret compartment. You do find, like, a hidden uh, baseball bat equivalent um, underneath the bar as well, just tucked away in a nice little spot in case someone gets a little bit rowdy. Um, there's a hatch that goes to the basement underneath, uh, but that's it. Secret money stash, secret weapon, and secret Secret basement. Passage. Secret basement. Mm -hmm. hmm. I suppose I go into the secret basement with them. Hmm. The secret basement has um, a couple of casks of ale. But more than that, it has like a little office over here. And there are some, there's some loose paperwork sitting next to some candles and a lantern. And the paperwork has some doodles and some writings on it, you know, personal thoughts of the bartender. And as you go down there, he'll shout out at you like, hey, that's, that's off limits. That's my stuff. No one went down there. You would have known if anyone was going down there. You can't do that in broad daylight like this. Knock it off. That's supposed to be my private personal area. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, well, you find some... You find a diary. You find some personal attempts at poetry. Um, some oh. creative writing practices. Um, a list of names. Some of them are crossed off. What are the oh. names? Give me an int check. No. I gotta tell you, Coibs, I don't think Crumb's very intelligent. Yeah. Can Crumb read or write, actually? Yes, she can read, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you do have literacy I, I as have a literacy. skill. I have literacy. Okay, okay, just checking. Just checking. She had to give up bureaucracy to get that, Neil. How can I you know. forget? I <laughs> know. 
Been out uh, the room. Yeah, well, oh, I did roll it. Sorry, I rolled several times. No, 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 no. I. You rolled a oh, twenty-two. No, I, didn't. I didn't roll several times. No, you did great. Um, yeah. It appears that this is a list of locals um, of people who live in and around the area. It's not explained. This is a list of blah, 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 but you recognize it's got um, Tina and Amy from the blacksmith shop across the way. It's got the, the name of the baker, the name of the washer, um, the name of the carpenter, all sort of looks like the the people who live right around this area all have their names written down on this piece and of paper some names are crossed off is there anything like significant that like ties them together for example the most obvious one would be they're all dead but no no anything um, smaller uh the crossing off is going in order it's not sort of randomized it's first mm. name crossed second third fourth crossed and then names five through eight are are uncrossed Got it. And none of them include Vincent? None of them include Vincent. They all include locals in the area. And aside from Amy and Tina, none of them match up with the the list of traders. Yeah. All right. And that's my full search down there. I don't find any mushrooms or berries again. Um, they're... It's a dark, dank place. There are some mushrooms growing out of the ground, but not like harvested and prepared. Yeah. And looking at the mushrooms growing out of the ground, they're not death cap mushrooms. They're just, you know, random miscellaneous ordinary mushrooms. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go back upstairs. And is there a difference between the pat down that I did initially and like a thorough pat down of these two individuals? I mean, you could take off their clothes and go through them individually and make sure that you didn't miss anything. But aside from, you know, aside from getting them naked, uh, no. Mm. But you could get them to take off their clothes so you could search the items in good detail, in excellent detail. See if there's yeah. like a, a hidden pouch somewhere. Maybe someone's got like a, a secret poison storing pouch that they've like stored on their undercarriage so that no one would find it during a pat down. That'd be that'd be a pretty good place to hide a, a package of poison. That's a pretty invasive Origin, search though. what do you think? We got a This is our only chance to search them before they leave. That's you do true. your thing. All right, buddy. I want to talk to the governor about this. You can't hey. treat people this way. I Why don't want to we... see your balls any more than you want to show them to me, but I have work to do here. What about, what about, you know, being a good, li I thought you said you were coming here to free us from evils and here you are kicking my customers out, ruining my business, pissing off all the people. And now this, this indignity, you I'm really sorry. think you're better than did them? You see? The orcs did never did this to me. Yeah, but did you see what happened to our friend? Mm-hmm. He got poisoned. You're just the same as the people you're here to replace. He grumbles to himself as he takes his clothes off and tosses well, them on the ground in disgust, revealing no secretly slung poison packages, and the clothes are all empty of anything nefarious. All right, you can, you can get dressed again. Mm -hmm. He grumbles, puts his clothes back on. All right, Mr. we're gonna leave waiter. you for a moment. You can, yeah. same thing with the waiter, except without the conversation. Nothing. Nada, no poisons. Ugh. We're gonna let you think about your actions and what you might wanna do next. And we're gonna flip to the other side of the island where we've got, not the other side of the island, the other side of the, the little tiny peninsula where we've got Lord Campbell's estate and Elaine Pentelin hauling Vincent with <laughs> Nook Nook tailing behind. Yep. I'll ask Nook Nook on our way. I'll say, uh, Nook Nook, did you see anything suspicious while you were in there? Um. No. You didn't see anybody slipping anything into Vincent's drink or something. Um. No. Is no right. I don't know if it's right. I mean, you were supposed to tell me what you saw, just the truth. You know, Why? if you didn't see it, that's fine. If you did see it, that's okay too. 
I saw tables and legs. Mm. I'm very short. I know. I know you are. Anyway, you can get to Lord Campbell's estate. This is not the appropriate estate music. Um, where is it? Here we go. You get to Lord Campbell's estate. It's, you know, mid-afternoon, but it's a nice day out. The sun is shining. You know, the weather in September is really nice in this part of the world. Uh, it's warm and comfortable. There's a gentle breeze. There's a sound of seals barking in the distance. Lord Campbell is out on one of his balconies, just practicing some painting with his art supplies. You know, he probably won't let, just let you see it because he's very new to painting. It's a, a recent um, passion that he's picked up. But one of the servants will see you coming and let him know. And by the time you arrive with the wagon or the cart and Vincent in it, uh, Lord Campbell himself will come down smattered with paint uh, and stick out his grubby hand to shake yours. Oh, Cal Pentelin, good to have you here. Uh, what's in the cart? Did you bring, did you bring snacks grab, for I'll, dessert? I'll take, I'll take Vincent's arm around my shoulder, I'll hoist him and I'll bridal carry him <laughs> out of the cart over to, over to Lord Campbell. I said, I'm in need of a bed. Oh. He's not plagued, is he? He was poisoned. Oh, well, if that's it, just, uh, oh my God, poisoned at the tavern. That sounds awful. Tell me all about it, please, this way. We'll find a nice, comfortable spot for him. It'll take you to a comfortable room over here and be like, my poison. What, a, I mean, I, I heard that everything with the ship went well, but poison? Here? Who? How could it be? I don't know, Crumb is taking care of it right now, but it's oh not a good... Oh my god, that's a terrible idea. Why would that be a terrible idea? Oh, she's probably the one who did it. Why would you say that? I mean, the I'm sneaky insulted. one. insulted. The, the, the sneaky, invisible halfling who goes around and wants to solve problems through means of violence. Listen, you yourself said you are the biggest collaborators with the orcs and I trusted you, right? <laughs> I think that speaks more poorly of your judgment than of mine. Well, maybe it does. But if you're in my position and in my rank of power, then you need people around you okay, who want okay. to achieve things, okay? Sure, sure. And these people... They're not always the most trustworthy ones for outsiders. Mm. But I can trust Crumb. I have no doubts. He looks to the <laughs> side, and the pet of the enemy that dogs at your heels? Excuse the, me? I did, I, I did not. The child that. I have no eating idea what goblin, said. he says, looking at Nook Nook. I'll look at him. I'll look up at Camel. I say, Camel. Mm. Are you trying to be helpful, or are you trying to tease me? I'm having a hard time figuring that one out. Well, I mean, I don't know anything that's going on, but you said poison, and so goblin and uh, assassin. If Obviously, I understand it's correctly, Nook Nook is walking around in just like a pair of linen shorts or some shit, right? He's not wearing a giant backpack and two daggers. He's not wearing a backpack and two daggers. He's got some pants and a shirt on. Yeah, he's got right. pockets, I'll technically. Say Sure, I'll say, um, well, to be honest, if Nook Nook would have poisoned him, which I doubt greatly, then Vincent had it coming in the first place because he was the one defending him to his death. So if That's Nook true. Nook has one single friend in this entire world, it is Vincent. And he'd be really, really pressed mm. to try and kill him. You're right. Done. Because this man has, has really spoken out for this. He would be dead without him. Mm -hmm. I like you say about Nook Nook whatever you want, but him and Vincent, these two are probably closer than any of the rest of us. Oh God, maybe he did it to know. himself to end an existence where his best friend's a goblin. Uh, how many best friends do you have, Lord Campbell? <laughs> oh, touche, touche. Yeah, uh, I figured. 
I'll put Vincent, I guess, in a in a room somewhere. I'll put him on a bed. Um, and I'll I'll pull up a chair. Yeah, I'll sit more next Campbell to, next goes to out and calls over one of his um maids or, or assistants or cleaners or cooks. One of these people who he was once equal with, uh, but now lords over, and uh, you know tells them that. For the remainder of the, until Vincent gets better, they are to be his personal assistant and see to his every need and comfort, um, whatever it takes. I'll take Vincent's hand and I'll lean like forward so I can hear him mumbling and I'll say, uh, how are you feeling? Terrible. <laughs> I'd say, um, you know you don't deserve this. I'm very sorry this happened to you. Thanks. Wait, kind of just <laughs> lie down on there. Um, I'll, I'll I'll just look at him and I'll say, um, you know, Vincent, you are a good person at heart. Maybe a little bit too good. People. They see you and your efforts to solve issues with diplomacy and talking and um, gifts and all these things, and they think it's a weakness. I don't think it is, for that matter. Okay, and even if I disagree with most of the things you do, that doesn't mean that I want this for you. And so it gives you a weak smile. Oh. You're a good man, Vincent. And if I find whoever did this to you, they will pay for that. If I end up croaking, I'll... I want you to have my shop. What? What, you... But What are you talking about? You're not croaking? I like... I like... Clutch his hand a little bit. Vincent, you make no sense, okay? <laughs> you need to save your strength, all right? The last, like, stop. No, absolutely not. I'll get better. Okay, that's that's the words I want to hear. And I guess I'll go and find Campbell for a quick chat. Yeah, he's back out at his easel up on uh, a balcony. You can go find him. Mm -hmm. I'll he's lean painting. against the, I lean against the door. I'll have a look at his painting. Oh no, Is no! As, as you come, he goes to you know turn the easel so you cannot see. <clears throat> it's not ready for, to be viewed. No, oh, I see. I sidestep. I try to get a get a peek. Um, that shouldn't be too terribly difficult. Give me a you know dex check at plus five. It should be really easy. Yeah, with right five, five on top of that. Yeah, um, you can get a, a view of it. It's um, a painting of the lagoon with the little yacht floating in it. But right now it's just sort of like a big blue blob and then there's like a yellow blob for the hills behind it. It's really early works and there's like the sky over there. He's just doing like the background sections and you can see with like a little bit of... Um, uh, like chalk dust he's done with his fingers like where the boat is going to be um, mm -hmm. you know. it's um amateur I'll just raise my eyebrows at the painting I won't say anything about it I guess I don't know what I expected to be honest um I will <laughs> I'll say to him so Campbell if we um go out are you yeah. asking me out I'm I squint at him. What? You said if we go out. Together. I didn't even finish my sentence. Sorry. All right. Starting over, I'll say, slightly scowling. Um... Well, I guess I forgot how I wanted to start this now. Isn't this awkward? Um, he if seems we take over, so pleased with himself that you've lost track take, of where you were going. If we take over the the island, right? 
let's say we conquer the you know the other army they leave what's going to happen with you if you conquer the the forces of Verasi. well the ones that are on the island i'm a yeah, you know, we're not marching on Solon, I hope at least. That's, that's not what I want. Well, I suppose what happens to me is entirely in your hands. You're the local authority. I have been promoted to a position well above my rank and stature by the enemy. You could leave me in this place. You could say that that promotion was illegal and uh, recommend that I be removed from power immediately. You could just do it yourself. Um, or you could make a recommendation to who, whatever governor or duke or count or whatever um, technically has authority over this area. My fate is entirely in your hands. Okay, then let me rephrase the question because I'm well aware of what I can and can't do here. What do you want me to do? About me. Well, to be honest, living a life of luxury, this is what I was built for. I would love to maintain this position, but, but I know it's not something that I was born into. It's not my divine right as it is yours. Um, I know that I was dealt a small hand in life, so I expect to return to that or end up in a dungeon somewhere. But you didn't ask what I expect, you ask what I want. So what I want would be to settle down in Santa Barbara peacefully, maintaining my position, finding love, maybe adopting some kids, maybe not, have a cozy life on the coast, What do you want? I'll say, um... You're not really being chosen by divinity or whatever you want to call it is not the important part. <laughs> the important part of being a noble is to do what's right, to take responsibility for those around you. And to think of a bigger picture than just yourself. Then I'm a perfect if you candidate. If you stop being Lord Campbell and return to being Bruce, you don't know what happens to all these people who've worked really hard for you. You are no longer will have any say in what happens to that town that you know better than anybody else because they will send someone, if it's not me, will take over the outpost and they will rule and they do not know these people and they will not care what they say because they come from the outside. Mm-hmm. If only we could use my intimate knowledge of the area and some brave, bold, decisive military leader to keep us safe. The two of us could join and protect these people for ages. Ah, oh, if only I could find such a strong, fierce warrior with a shared history that we might be able to bond over. We could live here forever. If you could find one of those and send them, ah, that would be great. You know, I don't think you're a bad person, but sometimes I really wish you know when and where to place the irony when you're speaking. A little bit of ambition would do you well, you know? I mean, how much more ambitious can you get than the Pentelin family? It's a far f distance from where I started. Oh, well, I guess you'll have to catch up if you want to keep up. Well, unless there's something you need, I have uh, things to paint and I'm burning light. Unless you just no. wanted to sit in my company while uh, I get the water just right or the sky. 
I appreciate it, but somebody tried poisoning my companion, so I need to make sure to stay by their side. Mm. Mm hmm. This is why you're the military leader, and I am the civilian, he says, returning to his easel. I will go back inside and I'll close the balcony doors behind me. This guy's going to get himself and killed And I'll return one day. to Vincent. This man is in no way related to me. What's his eye color, by the way, Neil? Just, just for like, I don't, I'm not sure if we've ever gotten like a full description. Can we do like, can I do a quick check? What does he look like again? Um, I don't think I've ever given a full-fledged description of this guy. Let's take a look. I, because I feel like we ambushed him so quickly on the boat that we never got to know what he actually looks like, right? Because mm -hmm. I do have an image, image in my head, but it's not great. Okay. Uh, well, he is a little bit on the short side. Um, half elves tend to be a little bit shorter than humans. This guy is five four, um, and he's it was pretty shorter than me. He's much shorter than you, I think. Um, he's also on the lightweight side of things. He's like 115 pounds. So he's like kind of short and fairly thin. Um, he's right-handed. He's, you know, half elves, it's always hard to judge their age. He's somewhere like in, for human age, he looks like he's in his thirties maybe, but in half elf years, that could be like late twenties to early seventies, just because of the, the aging process for half elves is so different. Um, he's got a clean cut face. He's got shortish hair. That's somewhere in that, like, not quite blonde, not quite redhead. I don't know what the term is. I like how you say shortish, but your hand does this. Yeah, well, it's... okay. Cause when I think long hair, uh, it's probably long for a uh, traditional American Are we talking 21st length? century men's haircut, but it's sort of like that shaggy, um, you know, the, the, the hair that comes off the top of the head might come to the ears and it doesn't hit his shoulders, but it, you know, it's kind of messy right. um, and comes down to below okay. the, somewhere along this neckline here. So short-ish hair for a man, longish hair for a man, shortish hair in general. Um, you know, somewhere between blonde and redheaded. Nice, soft and his eye. Color? eye. Uh, his eye color is sort of grayish, the sort of, you know, very light blue, sort of gray. Right. Soft eyes, gentle jawline, cheerful smile. Um, sort of constantly in this like trusting, friendly. Uh, life is good. I've been in a bad situation and now everything is just peachy forever. Literally the kind of guy who goes on a trip and did not bring a map whatsoever. You know, no phone, no map. He's just like, oh, yeah, we'll figure it out from there. Okay, got it. I was yeah. just curious. Yeah, that's him. He's he's the, the fun one of the party. How is that fun? Okay, I'm going back to Vincent. <laughs> All right. Did you have anything you wanted to discuss with Vincent? No, no, that's all. I'm waiting for the others to show back up or for okay. an assassin to pop out well, of behind the curtain. That's well, let's I... pop back over to Peach. You're in the tavern. It's not gone well. You haven't found anything. You've made an enemy of a bunch of people in the area with your aggressive police tactics. Um, but you know what? That's what you're here for. You're here to get the job frickin' done. And all of these other people want to, like play with kid gloves and have faith and trust. And that is exactly how you let the enemy overwhelm you and, and kill everyone. That's how you let them, you know, tear you apart. That's true. Uh, so what are you going to do? However, it, it's not like these tactics have uh, resulted in any advances, unfortunately. Not yet. Just keep, keep twisting them. Mm -hmm. What are you going to um, do? Well, Unless they shove the poison up their asses, it's not here. Oh no! So that's true. <laughs> Cavity search, boy. <laughs> no, don't worry. We will not cavity search. Um, yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be a, a, as kind as I can. Be and be like, thank you for your cooperation, boys. I'm real sorry that it came to this. Um. But really. We're kind of fucked, so I'm going to let them regain their dignity kind of as much as they can. And I'm going to be like, all right, 
Bordrin. Okay. I I don't really know what else we can glean from here. It might have been someone else that was in the bar that managed to poison his drink. Um, it's possible that all four cups were destined for our table and someone just walked by, plunked something mm. in. Yeah. It's rough. It's rough. It's real rough. Yeah, gonna be real hard to find whoever did this. Uh, hey, you two, you let us know if anything comes up, all right? I'm sure they will. Mm-hmm. Let's get out of here. It's been too long since I've... I haven't been away from Vincent for so long in quite some time. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's the real romance in this campaign that's coming up. Vincent Vordren Cross. Well, what that is, would it be in here, honestly? Mm. Well, uh, Crumb, are you going to yeah. reunite the party? Yeah. All right. I'm real Every sad that we didn't find anything. Yeah. Well, we can all get together once more, um, hanging out at Lord Campbell's estate. It's late in the afternoon by now. The sun is beginning to set as everyone gathers together. Vincent, um, you are able to talk. Your incapacitated state has, uh, what do we call it? lessened you are now in a state of being debilitated instead of your stats being reduced to one third they're now reduced to two thirds and you have um ac hit and initiative penalties of five but you can move and stand and you can make wisdom checks to try and focus and cast spells you have killed yet that yeah. poison hmm. well, what did I'm you gonna... say it could have killed him it could have, if it's what I think it was. If oh. it was, um, what's it called? Uh, the Belladonna. Belladonna. If it was mm. Death Cat Mushrooms. Uh, that absolutely could have killed him. Some some things that you eat don't, but that would. Well, lucky me, I'd say. Still weekly, but getting a little better. Uh, yeah, maybe. I'll I'll explain to him kind of the course that I expect this to take, which mm. is that he's going to be probably debilitated for like another day to two days. Um, and then he's still going to be like a bit irritated for maybe like another two. Mm -hmm. Which is uh, AC, uh, hit penalties of two for melee weapons. You don't think they tried to weaken us right before they attack us, do you? They could. They could. Uh, if they were smart, they would have spiked every single drink coming to our table. I'm curious as to why they didn't. If they purposefully weakened you, but also then it would have to be someone that, like, would have to be bartender related that he knew to give the drink to you. I'm not sure. Mm, well, make sure that while I'm recovering, they don't surprise attack us, I guess. I'll take the night shift. I'll I'll keep my guard up. I'm sorry that you're going through this, Vorgen. Sorry, not Vorgen, Vincent. No, I'll tap his shoulder and be like, get better, buddy. Mm, thank you. Uh, I, I do at some point want to get a little, just a little pat on the goblin. I just want to... Oh my to... God. Just a little um, one. You can tell him. I'm not sure. <laughs> He'll probably do it. Oh, of course he will. So, what do you say? I'll be like, Nuck, nuck. Come Bye. here. No. No. No, you're no fine. Way. I'm not going to hurt Nuck, nuck. We're going to play a game that's called the Pat Down Game. Basically, you have to do like a snow angel like this. Yeah, oh yeah, just keep your hands there. Ready? And now, I'm gonna start patting him down. Uh, he'll begin laughing as you pat down underneath his arms. Yeah, as you, that's fine. And he starts tickling him and he begins to like, ah, no, stop it, stop it. I don't, I don't like. Oh my God. No, this is the pat down game. I have to do the pat down. Mm, all right, you can pat down, Nook Nook. And wouldn't you know it, Nook Nook 
this little guy, he's got all sorts of crap. His pockets are filled with like things he's picked up off the ground, um, including a whole bunch of berries. Can I identify them as belladonna berries? Hmm. You do have a poisoning proficiency, don't you? I do indeed. Yeah. Or you're a you you bought like poison. Yeah. I have po. I I'm a poisoner. I'm yeah. A poisoning girl. Yeah. These do not look innocuous. In fact, as you sort through the things here, these are these are definitely poisonous berries. And uh, what's this small little jar that he's got? This like sealed clay container with a bit of cloth that's been soaked in beeswax and tied around the top of it to keep it airtight and watertight. Where did he, where did Nook Nook pick these things up from? Nook Nook. Nook Nook. Yeah. Where'd you get these berries? Vincent gave them to me. Vincent gave you these berries? Yep. When he was invisible. Oh my goodness. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, what did Vincent say to you? Well, he said that... He sees the look on you. But uh, that it... That they're good berries. Yeah. And yeah. what else did he say to you? Did Nick Nook do bad? No, no, Nick Nook didn't do bad. I just need to to figure out what these berries. I'm just curious what they're, happened. They're super berries. They're super berries? Yeah. 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 And what'd you do with them? Did you put any in Vincent's drink? Only because he told me to. And how was Vincent invisible if Vincent was beside you? He was invisible earlier. Oh. Yeah. And what did... What did Vincent tell you to do with the berries? They say put it in everyone's drink, put it in only Vincent's drink. You know, what was what was going on there? They're magic berries. They have yeah. to, everyone wants them. They're good for you. They make you stronger and we should all have them, but we're not supposed to know because if you see them, if you see the magic, the magic doesn't work. So you have to not um, know about the magic. And so- Oh, I see. Yeah, but okay, shh, shh. Don't tell anyone, cause, cause I have to give some to Elaine, and I have to wait until dinner when, when there's a party, and then, and then I can, then there's punch, and then I can put the rest in the punch, and then every, except for you, okay? You have to forget, okay? You don't remember. Shh, okay. Shh. And, and that's all that the invisible Vincent told you, yeah? What did the invisible Vincent say? Anything else? Oh, uh, this, and he pulls up the jar. Uh, this, this is the, the, the super, super magic. Mm -hmm. Super, super magic. Wait, what are you super, supposed to do? Super, super magic. Super, super magic. Oh, this goes in Elaine's nighttime wine. Oh, for her to have I think I'll super, be super magic. Twice just and to was be that? Insane. Is this all for today? Well, it's it's secret. Of course, secret. But invisible Vincent said today. Well, when when. It, it must, it, no, no, just when, that when, it's secret. It's just secret, but did yeah. it, you were told to put it in a, the party punch, the party's today? No. Oh, is there a party today? I mean, we're here, we're in party house again, right? So there must be party today. Every time we come here, there's party. Oh, Nick -Nook okay, gets scraps. got it, thank you. Yes, Nook Nook gets scraps. Um, hmm, okay. Um, that's amazing. Now, I think that what Invinci Invisible Vincent might have missed telling you is that actually it's more magical if you tell people. So, no. I, yeah. No. Yeah. You, you, you don't know magic. You're I like actually, me. You dumb. We dumb together. 
Uh huh. Vincent, no. Vincent goes mm-hmm. invisible. Vincent go makes mm-hmm. you invisible, right? Vincent. Vincent's very smart. Yep. Okay. Did the invisible Vincent give you anything else? The mm-hmm. sees? Oh yeah. I I have um I have flag. I'm supposed to wave flag when, when everyone is super strong. Mm. Yep. Very nice. Can I see the flag? Mm, it's in town. I had to hide so no one would see. Oh, where did you hide it? Outside. Cause... By 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 drink place. Mm. And when did you um? When did Invisible Vincent come to you? After we mm. pull you from water? Mm, no, before. Before? Yeah. Yep. Wow. Before. Yep. How long before? Mm. The sun comes up. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nook Nook goes outside. Digs mm-hmm. hole. Puts poop in hole. Oh, okay. Um, uh-huh. On way back to, to, to where we live. Uh, that's when Invisible Vincent tells me a secret plan to make everyone super strong. How did you know it was Vincent that was invisible? You hear Vincent's voice. You, he say, he just says I'm Vincent. Yep. Which one? Vincent's voice or did Vincent sound funny? He says. But said he's Vincent. Vincent say, psst, secret. Nook, nook, come. I have secret plan for you. Shh. Tell no one, but mm. but you caught me, so now you know. But now you can tell. No, okay. Shh, shh. You know, see. Close your eyes. I'm invisible. Shh. Crumb, crumb, crumb. I am secret. I am Nook Nook. You cannot see me. We have secret plan to make everyone super strong. Mm. Okay, crumb. That sounds good. But these poisons, we have to make sure this goes perfectly. So. I'm gonna be in on it with you, but I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure that I do it right because now I know the plan, and I need to make sure that it's done perfectly. Okay. Mmm. Vincent gave me this job. I must do, otherwise he beat me. Uh uh-uh, uh. Mm 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 mm. He will not beat you. But if you don't let me be a part of this plan, I don't know if I'm gonna keep it a secret. I know. He's gonna be so mad. He's gonna be so mad. I know. Exactly. So, nobody will know that I'm even a part of it, but I need to be a part of it. You can't tell anyone. I know, but I really, I want, I really want to be a part of it. It's like really cool. Okay. Okay. Good job, Nook Nook. You're pretty good. Okay. Not You're all right, little buddy. I still got caught. Yeah, but that's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at, you know, doing the. The, the tickle game. Um, actually, I need to poop. So could you dig hole for me outside? Do you think? Are you okay? You cannot dig your own hole? No, I'm feeling weak. I had too oh. much ale. Is oh. that okay? Yeah. Nook Nook used to digging poop hole. Thank you. I really big poop, really big hole, please. You just little halfling. Lots of poop inside. Okay. Like a okay. baby. Uh, okay. And Nook Nook will leave the estate. I'm going to my people. Yep, you can find your people. So. Uh, had down the goblin. But I want to be clear. It's just the inner circle, not the Campbell. Um, are we including Vordrin and Willa? I actually I don't think Willa's here. In. I think mm-hmm. Willa's commanding the troops back. Yeah, Willa's not here, but we're gonna do the the other two player characters in Vordrin, yeah. Vordren's not Lord Campbell. Sure. No. None um, of the servants. Not the servant that's taking care of Trump. Not right now. No. Okay. Yeah, you can kick her out of the room. So. I played the pat down game with the goblin and funny enough uh he had belladonna berries and another tincture like mix it around 
on him. But he said that Vincent gave it to him when he was invisible. Uh, the morning of the ship coming. The one where we saved him from the water. And that invisible Vincent gave him a secret plan to give us the good berries that give us lots of strength and then also the good good juice in this vial in Elaine's evening wine um, and to put the good strong strength giving berries in the punch at some sort of event um so I don't know who the invisible Vincent is he's also he was told that this is a super secret mission and that the magic won't work and make us all feel nice and strong if any of us know about it, but I found out about it because I found it. Um, and I've just let him believe that I'm not going to tell anyone and that I'm in on the plan so that hopefully they think they're ambushing us. Maybe we ambush them back. I don't think he'd keep a very good secret. I'm watching their faces as this is happening. Did you take the poison off him? Oh yeah, I mean, that's what I'm holding. All right. There's a flag that he's meant to wave after all the good, good berries and juices have been administered. Um, that will make us feel super strong. Hmm. Did I'm going you... to lean back in my chair and I'm going to give a tiny chuckle. Hmm. Did you ask uh, the goblin if he heard a woman's voice? No, he said that it was you. So I'm assuming that it was at least a male voice. I, don't I asked know. him He's if he sounded dumb. different. That's true. I'll ask him. I mean, you, you can try, you can change your voice, Crumb, right? You do that all the time. Oh yeah, I guess. Um, it's not clear to me when this plan was meant to take aim, but I think, like, today. Hmm, well, hopefully. Maybe if we, maybe if I feel better tomorrow, then we fly the flag and get ready to get attacked. Hmm. So I guess we'll let them ambush us, then. Yeah, we'll fly the flag in town, have everyone be ready there. And we'll have a grand fight. Yes. Um, Vincent, I would like to say that you are the orchestrator of your own demise here, buddy. You brought this adorable, cute, pathetic, stupid goblin into our party who now thinks that it's okay to poison all of us because it's good, good juice. Good, good juice. <laughs> I had to strip people naked in that barn. I'm gonna get jumped now. Vincent. Kind of smiles weakly and says, well, I suppose I had it coming then. And, well, I better rest up. We all, uh, we, we'll have a big day tomorrow. Hmm. I'm going to go and find Nook Nook digging my poop hole outside. Um, I mean, he went onto the woods. You, you got to wait for him to come back. He could uh, be anywhere, right? Okay. I'll wait for him. Okay. Well, why don't we take a break right here? We'll come back. We'll do our last act and we'll see you. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Rise of Drekus, Chapter 2, Episode 8 Nook Nook's Special Juice. Um, what do you want to do, party? Oh, you're waiting for him, right? You were going to wait for Nook Nook to come back. Yeah. From yeah, well, he's out for a while. You told him to dig, like, a big hole, right? So he's out there a little while. Um, and you're waiting for him. And after a little while, you're like, well, he's gone. He's been gone for a little while. It's probably not that. Then, you know, the time drags on, and you're like, well, even if he was digging a big hole and he's a dumb goblin, like, 
this is a long time to be gone. This is maybe too long to be gone. And then a little bit more time passes and then you actually start to get worried. Like maybe he got lost. Maybe something happened to him, but he hasn't come back from this, this important hole he was going to dig. I go inside and I tell Elaine that I told Nook Nook to go dig a hole for me to poop in. Uh, so that you did would... what? Because usually you poop in holes. So I mean, I him... sure. What? And then but what? <laughs> I told him to dig my hole so that I could have like a moment with you guys to let you know what was happening. But he's not back yet. And I'm just getting worried that Invincible visit invisible vincent um okay yeah has stricken again is it getting dark outside yeah okay the sun is Let's setting go. Ward, when you stay you stay here with vincent make sure um nobody does anything to him or oh, vincent Where... did you wanna go ahead uh yeah i feel, I, I feel strong enough i'll come with all right then We'll go looking for Nook Nook. Where are you going to go? Well, I saw him going off into a direction, I presume. Yeah, so. but it's it's woods out there and it's getting dark. But like, are you just going to wander around the woods looking for Nook Nook? Is there a specific direction or place you're heading to? Are we, are we Is not this an like... aimless search? Where do we have our poop holes typically? <laughs> Um, normally you use like a, a functioning latrine or outhouse that is dedicated for these purposes. Uh, the goblins are usually disallowed from using the rest of the civilized things, or they just like to do it on their own. Um, you never really pay attention to goblin bathroom habits, but you don't typically need like this, this estate comes with toilets. Mm. Not flush toilets, but, you know, dedicated places to do this. And then someone will come and they'll take the urine away because that's actually a useful thing that has properties that you use for, like, all sorts of industry. And then the, the poop will be brought to the farmers who will put it in a compost pile, who will then eventually turn it back into compost to feed yourself, which is why we have parasite problems in the olden world. Um, but <clears throat> the goblins just, you know, do the stuff out in the woods. So you don't need a poop hole. That's just a, a weird goblin thing. Unless you're, you I know, think we'll just overland. scout like the area from the estate to the beginning of the woods. We're not going like all the way deep okay. into the woods. Yeah, it's pretty quick to scan the nearby area. Maybe even poke in thirty to fifty feet, and uh, you see no sign of goblin, no sign of nook nook. I'm looking for even if it's just like the start of a dug hole. I'm looking for holes in general to see if they're like congregated a little closer together. No. No, nothing that res remotely resembles a poop hole. There's some ground squirrel holes. Very different. Very clearly ground squirrel holes. He's a pretty How scared big is guy. the shovel that he had? He didn't have a shovel. You He's were just talking to him hands. and then you, yeah. So you dig with your hands? No, I mean, that would be, you'd need a shovel or a stick or a rock, or maybe if the soil's loose enough, you could dig with your hands. Um. I mean, these are hmm. these are fantastic questions, but these are also the things that no one would ever pay attention to how a goblin Alan. would go about these things until all of a sudden it became super important. Yeah, Forgen's gonna look for the goblin's footprints when he walked out to go to the hole. Hmm, does Vordren have a tracking proficiency? Nope. Hmm, all right, Vordren. You're gonna need an amazing uh, check. You're going to make me a check of half your perception, and then it's going to be minus six on top of that. So a d20 plus six minus six. Okay. Uh, so it's just a d20. No. No sign of goblin tracks. There's a lot of tracks here. There's servants that are walking around. There's you all who came in and out. There's uh, some animal prints. But in and amongst all of these things, um, in the waning hours of night, uh, twilight, there are no easily spottable goblin prints. Okay. Do we um, hear anything? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Do we hear anything? Just the sounds of the woods at night, which are in this case are frogs and birds. 
Vincent thinks he knows how Lurk Nook would think. So from the door, he's going to look uh, around to see where the closest mm. tree is. Yeah, it's right there. Bam. Is that near a bunch of trees or just one tree? Uh, there's, you know, a tree 10 feet from it. And then, you know, there's a, they're around. Sometimes they clump, sometimes not clump. There's a few clumped around this one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's go look there and there. Vincent will point out and walk behind the group. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the group can go to the, the closest cops of trees and find nary a goblin nor a hole to be found. Mm-hmm. Um, when one person rolls something like looking for footprints in the party, mm-hmm. does that mean that they've rolled for the whole party? Um, hmm. This is always an awkward area in Dungeons & Dragons because... It's more fun if everyone gets to a chance to do something, but then all you need to do is bring like 30 people who don't know how to yeah. do something and then you can just force them And then the someone gets the check. Right. Um, so if you have a like an ex- a much better perception score or you're skilled in tracking, we can um, re-roll it. But otherwise, mm-hmm. I think we're going to leave it as a... Yeah. If, if you've got some sort of greater advantage, um, we can I definitely I don't think so. It. My perception is, I think, unremarkable. It's 13. Yeah, Vordrin's was 12. We're going to say that's more or less the same. Okay. Now, here's the question, party. Is it important that we find Nook Nook? Well, I... (sighs) Technically, no. Isn't he just going to show up in the morning? Right? Maybe he's just lost. Or... Or someone got to him. Or he's run away, right? He's lost his run or he's been nabbed. I'm just worried about him being nabbed because I could see a world where he goes out into the forest and then Invisible Vincent goes, Psst, how's it coming? And he's mm. like, oh, well, honestly, uh, mm. you know, Crumb found out. Da, da, da. And then that could cause yeah. things to go not according to the plan. Well, if they nabbed him, they've got a pretty good head start. Yeah. If they didn't have him and he's lost, he'll show up in the morning. If he's run, he's also got a good head start. I don't think he would have run. Mm. Um, Ideas? I guess there's not much we can do now. Yeah. I'm not too he wants to head back to bed. It. Yeah, I think we'll just stay at the estate. All right. I think it's more of a reason for us to really make sure that we're, like, watching overnight. Mm, mm-hmm. You can set some guards. The day, the night will end, the day will come. Still no sign of the goblin. You have breakfast. You're still feeling pretty bad there, Vincent. Um, you're still in the not incapacitated, but debilitated stage. Uh, based Can on... I make my own breakfast? I think we would make. Oh our yeah, own at this point. Okay. I appreciate you calling that out specifically. You would like to make your own breakfast, not have someone else prepare it for you. Yes. Yeah. Done. And you... all, all freaking drinks and such. Yes. Yes. Let that paranoia set in. Yes. <laughs> all right. Well. Um, you have your breakfast, your, your stuff. What are we going to do? We still have to assault their castle or defend from their assaults, or I don't even know what, now that we've got this complication of them moving against you, using your, your goblin friend as, as a tool, those bastards, those nefarious bastards. I know your weakness. I'm taking the day off, I say weekly from no. bed. Uh, but you should all get the army ready, just in case they do attack. The plan's going to be different if they have the goblin and they know that we know. Mm. It's not as if we can just like go wave the flag. If they have the goblin, they're going to know it's false. And so yep. they probably don't 
Are we gonna change their plan? I don't. Oh, that well, I don't think we have to change our plan. We can still go and try to pick them off in the woods. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's good. Starting tomorrow. You said I'd be getting over this today, right? Uh, yeah, by oh, end of day fine. today, in theory, tomorrow you should be just under like the irritating effects, which are a penalty of two to hit in melee combat, which for a spellcaster, not a huge deal. Hmm. Well, okay, then I will any... pull, today I will pull uh, the people we're going to take from the, um, what are we, what did we call it? The fort? The fort, the small yeah. fort over to, um, to the estate there. Okay. Um, it, was anyone outside when I was having that convo with Mr. Nook Nook, like, I don't know, like groundskeepers, people like clean in or whatever. There were people outside, yeah. They weren't involved in your conversation, but they For were sure. around. Uh, could we go ask them like what direction he went to and like maybe if they know where the goblins dig their poop holes? Yeah. Um, you ask a few of the people. One of them did recall seeing Nook Nook uh, and he was headed um north east if we look on the map the so this this town is just it's, it's a very big marker the town itself is on the far right side of this little tiny peninsula and the estate is on the far left side of this tiny little peninsula right and there is a a path that goes like due east from one to the other um and the lagoon where the yacht is, is just way over here on the very edge. They saw Nook Nook doing like a northeast thing, not quite in the direction of town, not towards the ocean, which is on two sides. Um, you know, kind of just the, the most inland route possible is what they saw them do. Hmm. Uh, and just in case it matters, the, the, the town is like right here-ish and the fort is like just a little bit south of that. You know, not very far, like a half mile. Maybe I should have done a blown up view for the close in specifics. No, I don't think oh, that. Wait, is... we have one. I just have to scroll down ever so slightly. Oh my God, look at that. We've done it. We've done it, ladies and gentlemen. This is the estate. They saw Nook Nook doing one of these. Hmm. Do any of them know where the goblins dig their poop holes? No. Um, mm -hmm. These people, the goblins were always just captives near the fort, and these ground keepers and estates folks and servants, um, they don't really ever interact with the goblins. They don't know nothing about goblin behavior. I'll let Elaine know that I think that Nook Nook went that way. I was speaking to one of the ground keepers. Is that in the direction of the pass? I mean, yeah, but everything is this way, right? Or, well, I this mean, is the. Or this way. Yeah. This is the fort where we have. Right? This is the fort. This is the town. Okay. Then, so you headed more into the direction of the town than the fort. Yeah. Well, and maybe you know, I was you... trying, to, trying to recover the flag. Hmm. Mm hmm. But I guess we can check in town today, at least, even if we don't do anything else. Yeah, I'm just concerned. I'm concerned for various things. One of my concerns is that Nook Nook was approached by Invisible Vincent, who handed him more poison to go and poison more people and get given the good, good juice. Yeah, well, you can go check in town. And sure enough, Murky of Murky's Tavern says that he saw Nook Nook in town last night. Um, he was digging around in the alley next to the tavern, and when he was called after, Nook Nook just took off and ran. Which direction? Um, north of the lagoon. Like if, you know, the tavern is somewhere in this part of town, so he went this way, along the, along the edge of the lagoon. Hmm. 
Did you see where he dug? Oh, I was just rooting around in the alleyway. He points to a pile where like wood is stored for um, the fireplace. All right, can we take off the wood and try to find what's Investigate, underneath? Investigate, yeah. Sure enough, there is a flag there. Um, it's it's a it's a, a, a black flag with a, a white V and a, a brown rod extending I'll from it. My backpack. Yeah, it's it's the flag of Farasi, goddess of death and destruction. I'll yell out Nook Nook's name. We have to be careful as well. Is though. this like a Nook Nook, or is this like a Nook Nook? Is this like no. an expression of rage <laughs> or calling first, for him? The okay. first one. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, no, he doesn't respond. Morky will I tell you this was last night. I think we have to be careful night. too, though, because there's an invisible person. So I was thinking, oh, we need to do a citywide search for the Nook. But if everyone knows they're meant to be looking for Nook Nook, and then invisible person chilling on a bench hears, oh, we're looking for Nook Nook. Oh, everyone's looking for Nook Nook. Then invisible person will be like, I either let's get the Nook out of here or etc. I mean, I'm not sure what's supposed to come out of this, to be honest. Like, the plan is off, so we're just doing, our, like, our own plan instead. We're not fighting him. He's gone. We can't keep searching for weeks. Like, we'll just go on with our stuff. So Vincent rests up for the day, and we'll move back to the, um... Back to the estate, get those soldiers ready, and we'll march out tomorrow. And the plan is to go to the pass and set up an ambush yeah. in the pass? You? Yep. Okay. It's a good plan. I mean, if they want to kill the outpost, they could have done that like ages ago. So they don't seem to want that. It seems more targeted towards the government that is here. So. Mm, all right. Well, party. We don't have enough time today to do the ambush. We can skip time to tomorrow when Vincent's well enough to go. And we can march with the army in tow to the pass. Um, why don't we talk about who we're bringing for this operation? Are we bringing all the warriors? Or are we can leaving we also, anyone behind? Whoever we do bring, can we give them a little rundown of like, Hey, Vincent was poisoned the other day. We're concerned about like people getting poisoned. Do not eat food unless you like, you know, see it. Don't like mm -hmm. randomly drink drinks. Yeah. Be super careful. Possible invisible poisoner going around. Watch your beverages. Yeah. Watch your food. Okay. If Vincent tells you something invisibly, don't listen to him. It's a shit situation because somebody was already invisible in town, so it's not like we are going to catch all of them at the mountain pass as we initially thought would be possible. Yeah. We're leaving half of the people here. We're taking half of the troops. Well, just half. We should take them all, shouldn't we? They are all, dude. There are already people in town that literally assaulted us. Mm. Yeah, like one person. You don't know that. I think it's a fair guess. Sure, you don't know it though. They've probably skipped town by now too. I mean, uh, I think we'll be falling into their hands if we leave half of our army behind. That's what they want us to do. Well, it depends what your purpose is. Do you want to make sure that this place stays safe and hope like nobody is here? And whatever's happening with Nook Nook is of non no concern whatsoever? If uh what I think is that they've they wanted to buy time for their hindered to heal up or rust up. So that's what they did. Or possibly they wanted to attack us if more of us were injured. Or, or uh, poisoned, but they didn't get many of us. Uh, either way, I think we should certainly bring everyone. If you raise a flag, you can't see it from the mountain pass, correct? You know, that's a really good point. Because the size if they of raise this the flag... flag as a signal, then somebody has to be where the fuck they can see it. Right, the flag would have to be in a really visible spot. You'd need to get some really good high ground and someone would need some sort of significant magrify. There's no way you would notice a flag from that distance. 
unless someone was much closer or they had a way of scrying or they had a spyglass. Um, but just with the if naked eye, If they had eye, a way impossible. of scrying, they wouldn't need the flag. Hmm. I mean, I don't know much about magic, but I don't think you know, if you can't see the flag in the first place, if, then you just scry on something else. Right. Yeah. The only way scry the scrying the would help is if you had a, a time like at sundown, put the flag in a spot where I'm going to scry. And if the flag is there, then this would happen. But you otherwise, you can see the flag from the lookout on the left hand side, though, of the of town where the stable was. Yeah. If you were in anywhere on this little tiny peninsula, you might be able to notice a flag if it was in the right spot and you were prepared to be looking for it. I think we should scour at least that part of the peninsula today. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I think uh, they're just trying to get us to waste time before going to attack, and we should send everyone to the pass today. Mm. Well, we're scouring the peninsula, Neil. That is the plan. That's the plan. I'm this making the... the call. The day that Vincent is still sort of resting. Yes. The, his last I day I of decide if he wants oh, to rest up or if he wants to come with. But I don't think it takes all day to go through the left and back, right? It was like half a day there, half a day there. Not even. This is, it's like a, a mile from, mile and a half from here to here. It's a right. short distance. Two okay. kilometers. I'll rest for the day. Well, that's, that's enough time then. I'm tomorrow to be the Perfect. time yeah. where exciting things happen. Okay. I actually think that there's nothing left to do today. I think we are at the ending point. It's early, it's half an hour early, but I think this is the perfect spot to end. Next week, when we come back, we'll go to the pass. If there's any guards there, we'll deal with them and then we'll set up our own counter ambush. And if there's no guards, well then, it's just a perfect ambush spot already. We'll figure it all out. Unless, unless anyone has any last minute, but I don't think so. I think it's all been discussed to death. Perfect. We All could, right. I guess, write a little note for Nook Nook uh, oh. to, and put it on top of the flag. He can't like, read. Oh. He's dumb. He can't read. <laughs> yeah, he can that, that mirror for God is nice. You could Does draw that, like, it a smiley. Fake, <laughs> fake Vincent, not real. <laughs> yeah. They probably try to eat the paper. Yeah. Oh, well. That's what he gets for taking bureaucracy. Silly nook nook. Silly All right. Silly nook nook. That's it for today's session, everybody. Thank you so much for coming through. I'm so glad to get this group back together. Uh, we'll see you all next week with a little bit of luck. Catch you then. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Yay. Bye.